Well, happy Friday, everyone. You know what that means? Another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. Now, if this is the first time you're gracing us with your presence, welcome. We are super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you will see a box, and in that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Now, sometimes I have the answers, sometimes I do not, but either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care, and sometimes aspects of life. So let's see who we have in the live stream this evening. Let's see who we got here. So we got always baked, never fried, kicking it off, saying always ready to learn. I will do my best, always baked, never fried. It's a short, it's a slower time of the year, but you know, we still try and make it fun. Still like to show up because you guys are showing up, so I'm gonna show up. And I've got some uh, some interesting stuff to talk about. It's a cool lawn to show some uh, some pictures of and, and the development in my lawn that I, experienced just like five o'clock this afternoon and it was, uh, it's not good, it's not good. Let's just say, let's say that much, not, not good. As always, we're coming to you guys live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So for those of you guys that are on Instagram, uh, feel free to be part of the conversation as well. You know, just uh, drop your question or comment in there and I will, I'll switch over to you guys as they, uh, as they come in. So guys, today marks the last application that I've done for this year. The last application really of, this, of the season, I uh, went down today. I did my pre-emergent and certainty. So I did uh, Spectacle Flow. If you guys know, I've been following the content for a while. I did a split application of Spectacle Flow this fall because I just wanted to try it out and see what results I got, if there's any differences at all. So I did Spectacle Flow and I also put some certainty in the tank along with it and sprayed these today. So. We'll see when March time frame rolls around how I did as far as keeping Poano out of the lawn, right? That's the uh, that's the the goal. There's a short that I did, a YouTube short that should get published tomorrow that talks about it, that kind of walks through it. But actually, you know what? I can 
I can do one better. I can I can go through the, you're not gonna be able to hear the audio, but I can just talk you through what I'm actually saying in the short. If you guys, since y'all are like the diehards, you're here on a Friday night, wanna get that uh, that lawn care, your lawn care fix. So let's do that really quick. I can, I can do it again later on in the show, but I can do that real quick right now. All right, so talking about how important pre-emergent is for weed-free lawn and that today I am spraying Spectacle Flow and I'm also gonna be using Certainty. So with um, with Spectacle Flow, um, I'm gonna be spraying that at a rate of 0 0.10 ounces, fluid ounces per thousand square feet. You can tell when I'm talking about, you know, I, the, the finger always does that when I'm talking about rates. And then for Certainty, it's gonna be 1.25 ounces per acre. So uh, it gives you an idea of what I'm gonna be using between these two products, what I did between these two products when I, when I use them today. And then uh, a tip for measuring these out is if you happen to have an old Primo Max or a Celeprin bottle, I use this to measure out my Spectacle Flow because it makes it really easy to measure out, you know, 10th of an, a fluid ounce increments. So I put Spectacle Flow in this bottle and I use that. I put 0.4 fluid ounces in four gallons of water and I spray that over 4,000 square feet using the Flujet tip and all we have to do now is wait to see how well it worked. So in a nutshell, that's what I said in the video. Granted, the video is a little more eloquent than I just said there, but you get the idea. That's what I did today. And uh, it was a great day for it because literally once I was done, a couple hours later, it just rained and rained and rained. So it was enough time for the certainty to, to I mean, to dry. The certainty got about three or four hours before the rain really kicked off, which was good. And again, I didn't have any POA that I saw in the lawn. It was really just as, as insurance that I put a little bit of um, a certainty in the tank as well. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. All right. So next up is Big Cedric. He says, Big Ron, checking in, supporting the channel. I appreciate that, Cedric. You are always here. And I, I do appreciate you coming to come hang out and support the uh, the content, especially this time of year when it's a bit slower. The next up, we got Patrick Haw. says, pregame. Here we go. And Mason RC says, who's ready? Good evening, guys and gals. So guys, Mason is one of the people that I wanted to share um, some pictures of. He sent me some uh, uh, some pictures of his lawn. Um, I think it was yesterday. It was either yesterday or earlier. I forget. Today all run together. It's either yesterday evening or, or this morning. Um, and what it is is that he he likes his lawn care program, right? So he likes what he what the results he gets out of his lawn care program. But this year he decided, you know what? Ron always talks about this product. You know, he talks about how it's the bees and knees calls biospectrum, how it helps increase microbial activity, helps your fertilizer work better, and then by extension, your turf looks better. So he kept his normal program, but this year he introduced this. So he sent me some pictures, he sent me a beaming email. You can you can see the email. I actually added it to, um, to the reviews for biospectrum on the golf course lawn source. You can read it there if you want. Uh, but pretty much what he said is, dude, it was so awesome. Really, really happy to see uh, the results, the lawn. The only thing I really changed between last year and this year is the introduction of Biospectrum into my lawn care program. And this is what he got. So you can see there, I mean, it's a fescue lawn. That color is baller. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I got to tell you, this time of year, you cool season guys and gals have all the fun. You have all the fun. My lawn's looking brown and dead. And this is what his lawn looks like. Incredible. And then picture two, the you know the, the establishing shot. We, we have to like that as well. So when people walk in, I think it's this patio he's taking that from, or the sidewalk. So when someone is walking up to the house, you know that's that's a pretty good flex. Color looks awesome. Stripe action is on point. I will give that stripe action nine point five. Nine point five. That's that's clean, man. The color looks good. You know you got the fringe work. I really dig it. Looks really good. And then finally, he says the thing that he changed this year. He added to his program this year that helped make that possible, which was Biospectrum. So thank you so much for sending out the, uh, the the email to me, Mason. I really appreciate, you know, you just, uh, you know, you're sharing the the results you get. That, that's the cool thing about this stuff, you know, because it's it's one thing for me to, um, to have my nutrient program, to do the spoon feeding program, to use the carbon kit on my lawn and get good results with it, right? Because people always say, hey, you know, it's, it's your lawn, you're always out there messing with it. Of course your lawn looks good. But the, the mark of a program that really works is when someone can take aspects of it incorporate into their program and they can see visible results, which always makes me feel great because one, I like great looking lawns, even if it's not Bermuda grass. And then second, it really also shows that the, um, just the, the structure and the, and the, the, the way I'm, I'm instructing or teaching people how to do things, like the way I like to do things does produce excellent results. So Mason, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate you taking the time to take the pictures and send them into me. And now you have your name in lights. You know what I mean? You have your moment. You can, you can take this snippet and you can show it to all your neighbors and be like, listen, guys, whereas I was dominating at like a level 
you know, seven. Now I'm at like a level nine, 9.5, because I'm like international now. Anybody that watches, you know, the the Ron Henry, the, the, the golf course lawn live stream, I'm like, you know, anyone in the world can now see my lawn. So you guys got to recognize, you got to put some respect on my name. You got to say that. Literally got to say that. You got to put some respect on my name now. Just like that. Awesome, sir. Thanks again. Next up, we got J uh, Jackie Bear in the house. He says, looks like we already ready. We are, man. It's going to be a good weekend, uh, Jackie Bear. I mean, there's a lot going on. We got the SEC championship this weekend. Georgia, hopefully, will uh, will get it done. Georgia will hopefully get it done. And, uh, and yeah, some other fun stuff planned. Uh, next up, we have uh, Cedric. Uh, Jackie Bear says, let's go. And then Cedric saying, like button smash already. Guys, and that's one thing that's really important to me. If you guys are enjoying the content as a free way to support the channel, you know, you know, I have the golf course lawn store where we, we sell biospectrum fertilizers, herbicides, insecticides, tons of, of products to help make your lawn incredible. But that all costs money. But if you want a free way, a free way to support the channel, to support the content, all you gotta do is move that mouse up to the thumbs up or the thumbs down. If you don't like it, you could do that too. I mean, you know, it's really your call, but to, but to, the engagement really matters. So hitting that like button, I'd really appreciate it. You know what? I will give you guys a few seconds to do that while I have a sip of my Arnold Palmer. LG, this one's for you. Prestige Details Furniture. What's going on? Hit that like button. Okay, next up, we have Koi Guy One. He says, "Good evening, everyone. What's going on, Koi Guy? I haven't seen you for a while, man. I I, if you're the same person that I remember from before, uh, but again, it's been a while since you've been on. But thank you for coming back to come hang out. Appreciate you. And then next up, we have a comment from Bruce Romano. Bruce Romano. He says, hey, Ron, do you have to be concerned with annual limits for Celsius or certainty if all you're doing is spot treatment? Less so, Bruce. I mean, if you are blanket spraying the lawn, I mean, to answer your question, yes, you, you, you always want to be concerned with annual limits. But if you are spot spraying, you know, it's, it's unlikely that you're going to exceed that. If you think about it, whenever you're, you're using, say, certainty for controlling, um, say, nuts edge, right? You know, you'll spray certainty with that, especially during the spring. And within a couple of weeks, you're going to seriously injure that um, the, the nuts edge to where you know it, it really like one one application of it, at, especially if you went to slightly higher rate, is going to give you really good control. Worst case scenario, you may have to do another application late in the season. So, from a spot spraying perspective, uh, Celsius and certainty, you you really shouldn't get anywhere near that. You know what I mean? So if, if you're using pre-emergen as part of your strategy to keep weeds out of your lawn, and then you're using Celsius and certainty to manage any breakthrough you get, you know the chance of you running into annual limits really is uh, is is pretty unlikely. Now, it's a situation where you could do that, like if you spray. Celsius, like say you have a lawn that you're trying to clean up, right? Like you, you, you got a new property, you got it, you moved into a place and the lawn was neglected and you spray Celsius at the high rate. If memory serves me, you really only get to do that one time. Like if you're blanket spraying. Um, so, but the thing is, if you are, if you are spraying Celsius, um, at the high rate with surfactant, um, you know, yet that produces a really good result to where if you have any little bit of breakthrough here and there any, any weeds that it doesn't take care of, which is kind of unlikely, but if it, but if you need to go back and spot spray here and there, you know, one, you don't necessarily have to go, go out at the high rate again. Um, but the, the nice thing about that combination is that if you mix it properly, and especially if you use surfactant along with it, most people are able to do a blanket spray one time and get a lot of good control, get really good control in their lawn to where, like I said, you're only just doing a little bit of spot spraying here and there. So really unlikely, again, if you're if you're doing spot treatments, it's really when you get into blanket spraying, especially if you're blanket spraying at the higher rates where you can run into an issue where you can uh, you can exceed the, uh, the the annual limits. So something to keep in mind. Again, if, you, and if you're using your, um, like a, a comprehensive herbicide strategy to where you're using pre-emergent, and then again, you're relying on Celsius uncertainty primarily for breakthrough, you're not going to really run into that. You really it shouldn't, it really shouldn't be a problem for you. So I'm trying to think if I've like, for example, the neighbor, I'm trying to think of the times when I, when I blanket sprayed that combination and when the neighbor, not Alex, but the one that was next to me when they moved in uh, and I sprayed their entire lawn with it, 
I only blanket sprayed once. And then after that, it was spot spraying primarily with certainty for some Poanua because when they moved in, it was, um, I did it in early spring. It was like late winter, early springtime. And uh, and Celsius did a great job. Like the broad leaves were like, were hating life. Uh, Poa, um, because I didn't go, I didn't, because I, I went at the, the rate of like one to a quarter ounce, I didn't go as, as high on the rate with certainty as I as I probably should have. I had to go back and hit the, the, the Poanua again, but the broad leaves, you know, a couple weeks later, and this was in the spring when the temperatures weren't really that cool, I'm sorry, weren't that warm yet, um, it, it produced a great result. So hope that helps, sir. Great question. And again, the, the key thing, the key thing for getting the best results when using that combination is to incorporate surfactant. Like it's really important. Like this is a, this is a big part of getting a great result with uh, with Celsius and uh, and certainty. So as long as you're doing that, should be good to go. Appreciate the question. If you need anything else, do let me know. That's a good one, Bruce. I think we'll you know we may make that make that into may take that piece and and uh, and share that with someone else because I actually like that question. It's a good one. It's a good one. All right, next up we have Eric T. He says, uh, what is the best to do now, Ron? I have some winter weeds. Mm. I'm not sure the question, Eric. If the question is what, uh, you know, if you have winter weeds, if you, what, what herbicide, is, is that the question? If the question is what herbicide to use to control winter weeds, the, the first step is, step one is to one, know what kind of grass you have. So if we assume you have Bermuda grass, the or warm season grass, Bermuda, St. Augustine, Zoysia, if we assume you have one of those. Uh, the next thing, once you establish that, you're, that your grass type is to figure out what kind of weed you have, what the weed is that you're trying to control. Um, so I mean, it could be a clover, could be could be um, you know could be a, a sort of different winter weeds. And then once you know thing one, what kind of grass you have, and then second with what the weed is, now we can select the herbicide. So if you have a warm season lawn, for the most part, if it's broad leaves, like Celsius is gonna be your jam. Like this is what you're gonna need for, for cleaning up for cleaning up weeds in your lawn. I mean, this will take care of clover, it'll take care of, um, I forget the numbers, it's 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 over 100 broad leaf weeds at this control. So it's pretty much, this is this is your go-to if you have warm season uh, turf grass and you're trying to um, to keep, to control weeds this, this time of year. As I was saying uh, to, to Bruce, you want to stack this along with surfactant. So this and surfactant together are what's going to going to help you produce a result. The way to know what kind of weed you have, there there's an app you can use. It's um it's like picture this. It's like an app, it's like, but it's a paid app. A, a free way of figuring out what the weed is that's in your lawn is take a picture of it and then go to Google Images. I think it's images.google.com and just paste that picture in, and Google will do will tell you. Hey, it, the, and the thing is, you can um, you can resize the area that you want you want the uh, the bot the AI to focus on. It will tell you what it thinks that weed is based on like the hundreds of hundreds of thousands of pictures similar to that that have been uploaded to the internet. So that's a free way of doing it. I have found that that is I mean it's, it's pretty good. It's fairly it's fairly close to what the the app that you pay for produces as far as results. And um, the other thing you'd want to know this time of year is is patience is going to be the order of the day, right? So even though you're dealing with, say, like a weed, like, say, clover, um, because, because the temperatures are cooler, the herbicides tend to take a bit longer to work than if you are trying to control the same weed when temperatures are warmer, when the weed is growing a bit more aggressively, right? So that's the thing to keep in mind is that, you know, whereas with Celsius, if you sprayed, like, say, Spurge in the summertime, you're going to see results in... 10 days to, you know, 10, 10 to 14 days with, uh, in the winter time, depending on what the temperatures are in your area, it may be a little bit longer. It's still going to work, but it's just going to be a little bit slower. So to show you what I'm talking about, um, if you, you didn't tell me what kind of grass you have, but let me see if you, you didn't, you didn't list it in here, but if, let's say if you are, um, let's say Celsius is what you're going to use. What you're going to want to get is go to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, go to weed killer. And then if you, all you're trying to do some spot spraying, you don't have to get this. Now, granted, this is the better deal. Like as far as like having enough to, for like several years and just like the cost per application, this is cheaper. But if all you all you have is like a small little patch of say clover or something you're trying to take care of and you don't want to spend the money that, that the 10 ounce costs, what you can do is you can go with the individual use packets like this, like, like 22 bucks. And you're going to stack this. This is a, uh, so, so at the high rate, uh, this will um, will do 2,000 square feet. So there's two ways to use this. You can you can take one of these packets, put it in four gallons of water. That's going to be a lower rate 
It's gonna produce pretty good control. Um, but if you're trying to do, if you're trying to use spot spraying, what I would say is take one of these, one packet, put it in two gallons of water. That's the equivalent of the high rate of Celsius. That will cover 2,000 square feet. Put a couple uh, teaspoons of surfactant in there along with it, and you're good to go. So you can get Celsius there. And if you go back to the collections page, you'll see surfactant is right here. So the spreader sticker and Celsius. Those are the two things you're gonna need for controlling weeds in uh, what I would recommend from like a broadleaf, for broadleaf control in a warm season lawn. If you're dealing with say Poannua, annual bluegrass, which looks something like this, looks like that. So pretty much if you have a warm season lawn, if you see something that looks bright green that almost looks like grass, it more than likely it's it's poannuate. If it looks it looks like what I'm showing you here, especially uh, like um you you can tell by the the white flowers that it produces in the center. If you see that the white seed heads, it's poannuate. So you can use certainty to control that. Now if that's the case, if you're if you're going after that particular weed, the thing to keep in mind is you have to use the higher rate for certainty. So in the product description of certainty, there's a video of me showing how I mix it for controlling uh, sedges. And the rate for sedges is quite a bit lower than the rate you need to use for poannua. So if you're trying to control poannua, you need to be at, be at a rate of 1.25 ounces per acre on the low end, up to two ounces per acre on the high end. So what that equates to is one large scoop and one or two of the small scoops, because it comes with, I can show you real quick here. Uh, do I have a spoon? Yeah, I do. I have, a, I have a spoon this one. So what that equates to is it's going to come with a measuring spoon like this, right? And you're going to see two sides. You're going to see large scoop, small scoop. So one of these, one large one, and then one or two of the small in a gallon of water, like that, that's what you're going to need to use for for um, to, for covering a thousand square feet of of poa. So that's going to be a, a higher end. Um, and that's what you need to to control poa. If you do, if you don't do that, you're just you'll 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 injure it. It'll get discolored a bit, but it's not going to really die off. So you so one large scoop and then one or two of the small is what you're going to need for um for poannua. Um, if that's what you're you're trying to control, because you didn't tell what kind of grass you have. I'm assuming it's warm season grass. If it's um so again, it's a broadleaf Celsius. If it's a grassy weed like poannua, then certainty. If uh, if you got cool season turf then what you can go with, you can do, you can use tenacity. Tenacity is an option, uh, but if you want something um, uh, even, probably even a little more cost effective, you can go with triad select. So this is a three-way, it's like a dicamba 2,4-D, and I forget what the third um, herbicide in it is, but this this is a, a good catch-all for broadleaf control um, in cool season grass, right? So where you can't use Celsius on cool season grass, you can use this. So just again, it just depends on what you are, on what you're trying, uh, what you're trying to control. So hope that helps, sir. Even with that, add a little surfactant on with it for best results. And uh, I hope that uh, that gets you on the right the right way. You absolutely can take care of weeds this time of year. The big thing to keep in mind is that it's going to be slower. Patience is the order of the day. All right, let's check out what we got here on the ground. We got Robert Rainey waving, saying, good evening. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Actually, you're a Seminoles fan, right? I think, I keep forgetting. Devin, Devin is the um, the people in Alabama fan. You know, I'm not gonna say the name of the team, but he, he's he's them. He's for them. I think you're a Seminoles fan. And I, and I believe they are, um, they're doing, they're doing pretty good. Oh, this, what is the portrait? You said, what is the portrait over my left shoulder? Yeah, so what it is, is um, so a, if you watch my my private Instagram, not my private, like my my non like golf course lawn Instagram, you know that I'm into firearms, martial arts, and like a few other things, right? I only have a couple of hobbies. Um, so one of my buddies is a good, he's not around here anymore, he moved back to South Carolina, but he's an, he's an awesome artist. And if you look, it's a picture of, um, it's like a mock-up of like Napoleon, um, cross, I think it's the name of the, the actual, the original painting is Napoleon crossing the Alps or Napoleon at the Alps, something along those lines, right? Um, but the, the, one of the firearms, one of the firearm manufacturers that I'm a big fan of is a company called Q. They make like really lightweight suppressed firearms that are just, they're awesome. If you ever get a chance to shoot one of them, just, you should, they're awesome. Um, and if you look here, one of the, one of the, um, the, the weapons they're, be, they're best known for is a 300 blackout gun called the Honey Badger. And so if you look here, instead of Napoleon, if you look there really quickly, actually I can probably get closer, you guys can see it. If you look really closely, instead of Napoleon, it's a badger. It's a honey badger and, and he's holding 
uh, the um, it's a honey badger holding a honey badger, which is, you know, I thought it was kind of a cool picture. And uh, the nice thing about this is that he only made two of these. He only did two of them. He did one for the range that um, that I go to, and then he did one for me, and he actually signed it. You can see his name right there, Jacob Cura, Cura Carmona. So if you ever had a chance to um, look him up, he again, awesome artist, and again, it's kind of a cool piece because it's literally a, um, there's only two of them in existence, and I got one of them. So I, I really, I like it. So there you go. That's what it is. All right, so next up we have Patrick, let me see what we got here. We have uh, Patrick Hall. He says, game time. It is. It is. It's game time. Well, tomorrow's game time, assuming that Georgia can get it done. You know, the only problem with with, uh, with Georgia playing tomorrow is, you know, um, is that he's playing he's playing Alabama. And, you know, Saban has a pretty, has a fairly decent record. I mean, you know, Kirby's proven him wrong, but he's got a pretty good, decent record against people that used to coach, used to work for him. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm not trying to jinx Georgia. All right, next up is Jacob Madrid. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Thanks so much for coming to hang out, Jacob. I appreciate you. And then next up, he says, um, Jeff Pennington says, is it too late to use Fahrenheit on still thriving La Spoda here in um, Southeast North Carolina? I don't know. I don't know. I think um, uh, Fahrenheit, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, um, uh, Jeff. You'd have to, you'd have to do some, have to do some research to, to, to find out for you. Um, I don't, it, here's, the short answer is, if that herbicide is labeled to control it, and the weed, you're, and and the, less, I can never, less Podesa is still actively growing, then it should be fine. It should be fine. Again, there's kind of a common theme with herbicides this time of year is that it's going to be a bit slower to work, but if it's labeled to control it, and the, the weed is actively growing, then it should work. It should, should, should work. All right, next up is Jared. Jared George is in the house. He says, let me move over here, fix this. He says, Ron, thank you for all you do and your knowledge. I use Spectracide Weed Stop as my pre-emergent, but I see so many people using Prodiamine as their pre-emergent. What makes it the preferred PE? So it's a great question. When you're using Spectracide, if you're using the granular, uh, that has dithiapyr in it. And I, I forget how much of active ingredient, how much dithiapyr is actually in that bag, right? So what I'd imagine is while it can provide some pre-emergent benefits, because it's really a post-emergent and pre-emergent type product, uh, it's it's not as good or the, you don't have as much control over the rate as you would if you sprayed dithiapyr separately or if you sprayed um, prodiamine separately. So the reason why people go with prodiamine um, instead of that spectricide product, is that one, it's strictly a pre-emergent, and then you have more control over the application rates. You know what I mean? So you can, you can, um, and then also the cost of it. Frankly, if you get prodiamine in the water dispersal granule, like the, the WDG form, um, that's, it's a lot cheaper per application than going with the uh, the spectricide weed stop. It's not a bad product. Spectricide, spectricide product isn't a bad product, but it's not as good as, if all you care about is pre-emergent, using like a standalone like prodiamine or using standalone dithiapyr or if you got Wormston turf, you know, standalone spectacle flow. Like it's, um, you just have more control over the rates. You're getting more active ingredient. So that's why many people, most people opt for that as, as they progress in their uh, their lawn care journey. So it's a, it's a decent product, but again, this, um, you know, I haven't used it. When was the last time I used Weed Stop? You know, I can tell you when the last time I used that was the Fix My Ugly Lawn series. Whenever Alex moved in, so it's been several years at this point, whenever we were renovating his lawn, I want to say, see the first or second video in that series, you'll actually see us using Weed Stop on his, uh, on his lawn. So again, it's a decent product as long as you apply it properly. Um, if you're trying to use it as a pre-emergent, if all you care about is the pre-emergent aspects of it, you can apply it and then water it in. But if you're wanting to get the benefits of the post-emergent herbicides that are in that product as well, there's a specific way you have to use it. You need to apply it to a wet lawn. So either run a short irrigation cycle or apply it to the lawn when there's dew on the lawn and then let it sit. So don't water it in right away. So you let it sit on the lawn for a day and then the following day you can run your irrigation and that will um, move it into the um, into the ground into, into the soil to where you get the benefits of the dithiapyr that's in that product. So you have to let you have to allow the post immersion aspect of it work first. You need to again spray it on a, or apply it to a, a wet lawn. Um, allow it to you know to get on the weed. Let it let it um, let the weed begin to take up the uh, the herbicides that are in it. I think it's got 
dicamba and 2,4-D, a couple other things in there. But you need to allow that time for that that to work, and then the following day, a day or two later, then you can run irrigation, and then you'll get then you'll then the then you're basically activating the pre-emergent aspect um, of that product. So, hope that helps, Jared. It's um again, it's not a bad product, but the cost per application is quite a bit more expensive than using standalone products, and uh, so so yeah, that's um that's probably why you don't see people using it uh, nearly as much as um as 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 um, prodiamine or using you know. Uh, or anything else, providing dithyrope or uh, or spectacle, so or pentamethylin, depending on what you're what you're going for. All right, next up we have Brian Tanner. He says, "Good evening, Ron. Crazy weather here in Georgia. My Bermuda doesn't know what to do. It's dormant or stay green? I hear you, man. I I saw the forecast, the rain, the forecast today. And I said, okay, today's the day. I got to it's be it's beginning of December. I got to get my spectacle and." certainty out. So I need a little bit of dry weather for the certainty because I don't want to apply it, you know, when it's raining outside. Uh, and I got that. So I got it down and then it started raining this afternoon. It's been raining. It's going to rain tomorrow. So, uh, so yeah, it's a thing. Guys, something else that's, go that's happened here. And it's, 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 it, it hurts me to have to even say this, but this afternoon, this afternoon. So I, I went out and looked in the lawn and, um, between my neighbor and myself, not Alex, I, I saw what appeared to be uh, like mole, mole, mole tunnels, moles. There's a mole, it's back, mole's back. And um, I mean, I, I took it well. I mean, I didn't, I, I wasn't bitter. I, I, you know, I didn't overreact. I just went out, I got my hose, flooded the, uh, flooded the tunnels. I mean, it looked, fr here's the thing that was interesting. You literally saw earthworms. I've never seen so many earthworms all like piled up along this this track like they were running for their lives man that mole was after them and they were they were they were breaking camp they're trying to get out so i um you know i applied i don't know a, a, quite a bit of water to to the uh, to the tunnels we'll see um it did not surface i don't know if i got enough to where it drowned it's kind of hard to drown moles because they can they can block off an area to where they don't drown pretty easily but i uh i i did not get it to surface so i don't know i'm hoping that I drowned it, but if not, we'll see. We'll see. Um, tomorrow morning when I wake up to go to karate, I'll I'll look out in the lawn and uh, you know, hopefully there there might be tracks, there might not. But I mean, it just, it, it was not. Um, this afternoon was not a good day. Today was a good day up until about five o'clock today. You know, I was like all happy, got my pre-emergent down, and all was good. And then this um, this mole, this mole decided he wants that smoke. So you want that smoke? I'm gonna bring it to you. You want the smoke? It's coming, man. Hopefully the, the the water I put in there is enough to make him go somewhere else. But if he wants the smoke, I am not the one. I'm not the one. It's not gonna, we're not, it's gonna be me or him, and it's probably gonna be me. So he's gonna, he's gonna have to, he, he, she, they, all of them, whatever it is, they're gonna they're gonna get what's coming to him. Anyway, uh, moving on. And really, I'm not bitter. Not upset about this. Uh, moving on, uh, Jared is up next. He says, and to and to piggyback, uh, come late winter, early spring, what temperature am I looking to apply my pre-emergent? What is the window? Can I do it too early? When is too late? Excellent question, Jared. So when it comes to your spring pre-emergent application, you want to apply the pre-emergent before average soil temperatures are in the mid 50s, because that's when some of your war warm uh, season weeds like Poania begin, sorry, like, oh, let me start over. Because I want to make this into a short, because it's a great question. So Jared George has the question. He says, um, to piggyback on late winter, early spring, what temperature am I looking to apply my pre-emergent? What is the window? Can I do it too early? When is it too late? All right, so Jared, when it comes to your spring pre-emergent app, you want the pre-emergent in the soil prior to the average soil temperatures being in the mid-50s. That's when crabgrass, spurge, when they begin to germinate. So you want the pre-emergent in the soil prior to that. There's some people that wait until the average soil temps are in the mid-50s, and in my opinion, that is too late. Uh, so whenever I see soil temps you know, in the, in the high 40s, low 50s, and trending warmer, so if you look at the forecast, we have a, a stretch of warm weather coming in, I go ahead and get my pre-emergent down. What that works out for me in, here in Northeast Georgia is late mid, mid to late February is a good time to get your, your pre-emergent down. But again, that's gonna vary based on where in the country you are. The most accurate way is to track the average soil temps in your area, the average five-day soil temps. And when the, the average five-day is in the low 50s, so high 40s, low 50s and trending warmer, get your pre-emergent out. That's gonna allow you to get the best, uh, the best result. As far as when it's too late, 
if, if you wait until like the, the weeds have already germinated. So if you wait until, so here's the thing. If you wait until say it's, I don't know, let's say in, in my area, so you wait until May to start putting your pre-emergent out. That's that's probably too late. You're not gonna get very good control. But what, what you'll find is if you, if you do it when I'm telling you to do it, right, which is prior to the average soil temps being in the mid 50s, you're going to get the best control using that strategy. If you wait until say March and when soil temps are in the you know, mid 50s, six, low 60s, you're still gonna get some benefits. You're still gonna be better than not using pre-emergent at all, but you are gonna have some breakthroughs. So the longer you wait, the less effective it is because it's literally in the name, right? It's called pre-emergent for a reason. It's like you, you, you apply it prior to the weeds emerging. So pre-emergent. So prior to them emerging, you got to have it in the soil. As far as timing on the early side, a little bit early is always better than a little bit late in my opinion. So if you're a week or two early, no big deal. Around here, late January, the trucks are already rolling in my neighborhood and putting out their pre-emergent. So you know, if you're a little bit early, it's not going to be uh, that big a deal. If you're a bit late, that's when you're not going to get as good control. So um, if, again, if you're in Northeast Georgia, which I don't think you are, but if you're in Northeast Georgia, I would say February timeframe is, uh, is a great time to get your, your pre-emergent down. And as you progress into March, April, you're going to get less and less, it's going to, it's going to be less and less effective if you, um, if you wait longer. So just depends on uh, where you are and um, that will, that will drive when you get yours out. But again, just average soil temps before the average soil temps and not when before the average soil temps from the mid fifties is when I, is what I find produces great results as far as, um, as far as pre-emergent goes. So hope that helps, sir. Uh, next up we got, we got Jackson Keen join the live stream on, uh, on the gram. Hope you guys are doing well. All right. Next up EB is in the house. He has a question that has plagued many a lawn care geek says, I have Dallas grass in my lawn. What do I need to get rid of it? It's a tough grass to get rid of. Yeah, so the bad news, EB, is that if for a residential lawn, there's not really a post-emergent herbicide that is labeled for use on residential lawns that's, that's very effective against Dallas grass. You'll find on the labels of tons of different herbicides, tons of different products, they'll say the list Dallas grass there, but then there'll normally be a little asterisk where it'll say for suppression only, or you know when mixed with, this other herbicide that you're not supposed to use in residential lawns anymore. So your best bet really to get rid of it is to dig it out. Now that's a lot of work. I know it's kind of a pain, but you'd be surprised if you take an hour, you know, an hour, a couple times throughout the week, you can, you can clean up a lawn pretty quickly. So there, there is, there are herbicides, there are herbicides that will control it, but they're not labeled for use on residential lawns. So I'm not gonna tell you the name of it. You can, you can research it and figure it out yourself if you want. But, um, but there's not really one that you can, um, that you can use on, or you're supposed to use on residential turf to control uh, Dallas grass. That's very effective anyway, right? So again, your best bet, dig it out. Dig it out, dig it out, dig it out, dig it out. Get yourself a, get yourself a shovel, um, you know, like a, a weeding tool, like one of these, one of these, um, these hand weeding tools on Amazon. I can actually show you here. And weeding tool, one of these guys. Um, I've used it in the past. Like when I, the first time when I moved in, when we moved in here and we're cleaning up uh, weeds that, that, um, that spring, I had a little bit, of, uh, had a little bit of crabgrass here and there, and I didn't go out and spray herbicides. I just used a uh, a manual weeding tool to get rid of it. And I don't see it here. Here we go. Uh, so this guy, something like something like this. I'll show you here really quick. You can go with one of these guys. Something like this will do a great job. It's a whole six dollars, five dollars. You know, it's not going to break the bank. And these are very effective. The reason why I like this particular style, I've tried a bunch of them. Why I like this one is that it it does a great job of removing the weeds without taking a big chunk of, you know, messing up the turf too much. Like you literally can insert it, um, that little curve section right here, uh, that little curve section that sits on the soil does a really good job of, of pulling the, the root, uh, you know, pulling the weed out along with the roots and, and just minimizing damage to the lawn in the, in the process. So I'm a big fan of those. They're really not that expensive. And if you want one, I'll get you a link to where you can uh, pick one up. Again, they're not they're not, um, they're not pricey, which is kind of cool. Uh, at EB, EB, there you go. And then hand weeding tool. Yeah, but sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, man. I, I know that you'd, you know, the, you'd love to be able to say, hey, go, go buy this herbicide and that will clean up the Dallas grass. But there's, there unfortunately isn't one 
that is labeled for use on residential lawns. Not, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's, there's, there are a couple others, but they're, but they're like crazy expensive. So, the the more economical route and the route that most people um, should follow is just to dig it out. Like I have again a, a couple of friends that have spray businesses, and one, so one of them won't even take a lawn that has Dallas grass in it because it's a, it's a colossal pain because the the customers don't ever understand that. You know, he's not gonna sit there and dig it out and he can't really use the herbicide that's that's really good for controlling it. Um, and then the other one that will take on those types of lawns says, you know, lets the customer know, hey, listen, you're gonna be, it's kind of like a partnership type of thing and you're gonna have to do your part to help to help get rid of this and to physically remove it. So hope that helps, sir. Sorry I don't have a better answer for you, but at least, uh, at least you have a path forward at this point, right? Okay, next up, we have a super chat. Our super chat, or no, no, I'm sorry. We have a, a message from LG celebrating 23 months of, of membership. Thank you so much, LG. You know we're gonna we're gonna acknowledge that. We're gonna acknowledge that. 23 months, almost two years of being a member of the channel. Thank you so much. He says more problems. Time to call in the enforcer, Alex Lee. Yeah, Alex just got back. He was on vacation, so the timing's good, man. And Alex is not afraid to put you know to put to apply to liberally apply the stick. So uh, assuming my uh, my attempt at flooding it out didn't work, which it probably didn't. Uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to apply the stick. We'll uh, we'll see, we'll see. But, but the the one thing that's interesting, right? And kind of like what I tell you guys all the time when it comes to to moles is the way to to make your lawn less attractive is to eliminate their food source. And my lawn has got because the soil is really healthy. There's so many earthworms in it. Like literally along the tunnels, you you literally saw. I should take take a picture of it, but there's literally like earthworms that are all along the 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 mole tunnel, the track that the the mole was following, trying to get to them. So that aspect is um it's gonna make it a bit more challenging because they uh, they came to uh, they found a buffet right. But um but again, hopefully hopefully me flooding them is gonna discourage them to go somewhere else or you know catch that smoke. It's coming. All right, next up is Colin. C. Pims is in the house. He says, what's happening, Ron? Hope your week has been well. It has been. It has been up until five o'clock this afternoon, but it's, you know, this too shall pass. You know, if the mole comes back, I'll be able to make some videos, some content on it. You guys will, will see how I uh, I go through the process of getting, getting rid of it. But uh, it's always something, man. There's always something with the lawn. Always, always, always something. So, uh, so yeah. But all things considered, I can't complain. Got my my uh, spectacle flow and certainty out uh, today. We got plenty of rainfall. It's going to rain tomorrow as well, so we got watered in, which is nice. And uh, yeah, so outside of the mole, it was a pretty good week. And uh, and yeah, this too shall pass, right? Next up is uh, Jacob Madrid. He says, uh, "Wow, those lawn picks are fire in Dwayne's world. Stripe action." absolutely on point. It is, man. For those of you guys that have joined the live stream late, so um, Mason RC um, sent out, uh, sent me some pictures of his uh, of his lawn, and he, he already has a pretty good program that, that he likes, and this year he changed one thing, which was to introduce biospectrum. So this is a picture of how the lawn looks. I mean, it's that color is incredible. Stripe action is on point. There's another picture. And then he sent me a picture of uh, of Biospectrum. This is what he added. And what, what Biospectrum is, guys, it's a microbial, you can think of it as almost like a, a food for the for the, for the microbes, the healthy bugs in your soil. So when you apply fertilizer, you know, the the, the, the way the, the life cycle works, you apply granular fertilizer, the um, the healthy bacteria, fungi, break it down and make it and make the 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 night turn the fertilizer, make 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 the nitrate in, in the fertilizer in a form that's available for uptake by the plant. So Biospectrum helps helps accelerate that process. So he uh, he was really happy with the results. And again, it's a it's a great, uh, excellent, excellent product. And you know, you know, actually, um, uh, actually what we can do, uh, Iceman RC, because I have your email. What we can do is because, because I really appreciate you sending that out to me, I think the folks at Miramichi Green will also enjoy the feedback. You, sir, will be our Miramichi question or, you know, shirt winner of the week. So I will send you an email once the, sh once the show is over with how you can get one of these. It's the Greatness from the Ground Up shirt. I got to get with them. So they got, we got to get it. We got to have to get a new shirt here soon. This is, this one is, you know, good for this season, but for next season, got to come up with a new design. So um, remind me, if you don't mind, drop me an email, say, hey, Ron, you tell us on the live stream, you're going to give me a free shirt. How do I get it? So that way I don't forget. And I will get you the details of how to pick one up 
once the show is over. So again, thank you for sending out, sending the awesome pictures and for the feedback on the product. I'm glad that you're getting awesome results with it. Next up is Mark Romano. Mark Romano is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, everyone lean on that like button, help the channel out. It's free. There you go. It is free. It is free. Next up is Kevin Hester. He says, got my second round of Spectacle Flow Down Wednesday, just ahead of this rain. Good job. He says, thanks, Ron, for all your advice. You're, you're very, very welcome. So what um, Kevin is talking about is Spectacle Flow, which is, again, in my opinion, for warm season turf, you can't really do much better than Spectacle for, um, for especially if your goal is to keep Poanua out of your lawn. And there's a couple ways to use it. In years past, I've applied this one time at the higher rate which is around 0.2 fluid ounces per thousand square feet. I get excellent control with that. You do you do the application late August, early September, and for the most part, that's going to cover you. It's going to carry you through until your spring pre-emergent February March timeframe, right? But then I got the question from a viewer saying, you know, why not? Have you ever considered like doing a split app with it? And I said, I mean, not really. Like the way I'm doing it now works. It's essentially the same amount of product going out. The only difference is it's just more work for me because I got to go out there twice instead of once. But to answer the question, this year I changed it up a bit. So I did 0 0.10 fluid ounces. So half that, half of the, the, the rate that I normally would use in late August, early September. And then today I did another 0 0.10 ounces of the same product, Spectacle Flow. And along with it, I also added some certainty in the tank because this time of year, the weed that we are that we're really trying to keep out of, out of our lawn really now and then also going into the spring is annual bluegrass, also known as poannua. This is excellent at preventing it. This is excellent at controlling any that, that has broken through. So putting them together is, uh, is, a, is a great recipe for keeping poa out of your lawn. And the only reason why I, I added certainty to my second app is because um, I, I didn't use the full rate in September. If there's any breakthrough, again, I didn't see any. I was walking the lawn as I was spraying it. I didn't, I didn't see any POA. But if there's any that's there, the certainty will take care of that. So that's why I, I added that to the um, to the to the blend that went on in the lawn today. So glad to hear you got yours down, Kevin. Great job. You were ahead of the curve. You were ahead of me. You got yours done a couple of days ago, which is uh, great timing because again, we're gonna have rain, uh, you know, today and all this weekend. So get it watered in for free, which is kind of cool, right? Happy Fuller is up next. He says. Hey Ron, is Yukon considered a type of common Bermuda? I wanna make sure I plan the right amount of Primo Max next year. The application rates for the two are different, making sure no tip burn. Yes, yeah, so it's a good question, um, um, Happy. I believe um, Yukon is considered a, an improved common. So here's what I would do. Uh, it's an improved common, Arden 15, they marketed it as a hybrid Bermuda grass is grown from seed, but it's, uh, some people say that's not really true. It's really an improved common. I will tell you that with, from Arden 15, which, you know, whether you, depending on which cap you fall into, um, the rate that I use for it is the, um, the same rate that I use for hybrid Bermuda grass. I've never applied uh, Primo Max on my lawn at the, the 0.75 fluid ounce per thousand square foot rate that you would use for um, for common Bermuda. And I've gotten great, you know, I've gotten, you know, great um, regulation using that strategy. So Yukon, again, if Yukon and Arden 15 are in the same family if, if from that from that standpoint, um, what I would say is start low and then work your way up. So what, what, here, here's how you can, you can do it, how you can tell, is if you go out and you put down, you start out at say a quarter of an ounce, right? So 0.25 ounces per thousand square feet. You, you begin that, you, you start that at the beginning of the season. Um, if you find that, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks into this, like the lawn one growth isn't really slowing down or the lawn is coming out of regulation a bit sooner than, than, than it should, you can slowly increase the rate. So even if your goal, right, is to get to say, like I still won't do 0.75 because I don't, I don't think you're gonna need it. But say, even if the goal is to get to say, like say half an ounce per thousand square feet, right? I would still start out the beginning of the season low. I would still start out around a quarter of an ounce. And then if you're doing like split apps, you can you can, you can slowly ramp the rate up to, you know, the 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 rate that you decide you wanna you wanna target. In my case, and on my lawn, um 0.4 ounces, 0 0.40 ounces, which is the higher end of the application rate for Primo Max for um, for hybrid hybrid Bermuda is what I where I normally end up. I don't go much higher than that. And, and if, if you're doing, 
If you're spraying it the way that I recommend happy, which is instead of applying it once per month, spraying it every two weeks, uh, then you're, you're, you really shouldn't have to slam along with a, with a higher rate. You're gonna minimize the chance of tip burn and um, you're gonna get all the benefits with really none of the negatives other than you have to get out there twice per month versus one time per month. So I've got a blog post on this topic on Growth Regulator that speaks to that. I think it's on page three at this point. So if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to resources then to blog, and then you find the blog post on plant growth regulation, which I believe is gonna be on page three. Yep, nope, it's on page two, cool. So this blog post on how uh, plant growth regulation can make your lawn thicker and greener, talks about PGR, talks about Primo Max, all the benefits of it, and uh, talks, shows a video showing um, how I like to mix it and use it. But the, the thing that you're talking about, which is around preventing tip burn, if you look at the third item on the table of contents, this explains the, the the technique of of instead of spraying the product at the full rate uh, once per month, you could spray it at half the rate uh, every two weeks. And I did that, uh, and and again did that last did that last year, did it this season, and it's gotten I've gotten great results with it. People that have started doing that have also gotten great results with it. And to help you with that, if you scroll down further. I've got the the split application rates for your various grass types, right? So if you have common Bermuda, if you're going, if you if you really want to go to the 0.75 rate, which I don't, I really don't recommend it. But if you want to do that, you could, um, you know, this is what you'd be spraying every two weeks for hybrid Bermuda. This is what you're spraying every couple of weeks, and and so on and so forth for each of the common grass types, if that makes sense. So what what I would say if you're going to do what I'm suggesting, happy. And before I forget, let me get you. The link to this, this blog post, so you are all covered. Let me get you that. So here's what I would do. If you have a four gallon, happy fuller, uh, there you go. If you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, right? And we're gonna start at the quarter of an ounce per thousand square foot rate. What you would normally do is you would take, you would take one ounce, one fluid ounce of Primo Max, and that would go in four gallons of water and that would cover 4,000 square feet. That is the full rate. We're not gonna do it that way. The way I would recommend you do it is take half that. So you're gonna take half an ounce. So if you look here on the integrated measuring cup right there, you would squeeze this until it gets all the way up to like right there, right? So that's half an ounce, half an ounce of Primo Max. I would add that to four gallons of water, spray that over 4,000 square feet, and then do that again two weeks later. So every couple of weeks, you can you can spray you know half of what the, um, the the monthly rate is for the product. And what I find is that prevents tip burn. You get great regulation, and uh, it just it just smooths out. You know, if, if you happen to live in a part of the country where it gets really hot or you get a lot of rainfall, and you're concerned about the lawn potentially coming out of regulation at that week between say week three and week four. Doing it this way gets you know prevents that problem because you're spraying it literally. You're kind of spoon feeding it. You're putting it. You're putting it in the plant every couple of weeks. And again, when even if you decide you want to go at a rate that's higher than um, you know a, a quarter of an ounce per thousand, I would still start there and then just slowly work your way up for best results. So hope that helps. Again, the blog post you got a link to that. And if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. But that is um, that's how I would do it. Uh, you, you, even talking to Devin, you know, I'm sure you're watching him when he's on the live stream. Uh, D Demare, who is a uh, he's a, a greenskeeper for a course out in Colorado Springs. Even with him, when they first introduced Primo to the fairways into the to the rest of the course, they still start they start at a lower rate and ramp up to the rate that they want to maintain. They want to they want to keep the the turf at. So it's a good way of again preventing tip burn and just introducing it to the plant slowly. As far as time frame, and I would start doing that if you live in Northeast Georgia, April, like late April time frame is when you can do your first uh, application of Primo, and then just every two weeks all the way through September, um, September time frame. That's what that's how I, I like to do it. All right, next up is uh, Jared. He says my starting uh, my first big work to my new McLean. Uh, going to take the uh, Briggs & Stratton engine apart and clean it up, asked last week, but does anyone know how to powder coat paint? Um, I do not know how to powder coat. It's something that I would say is probably best left to like a like a business that does that, because from what I understand, you need um, you need the oven to bake, you know, to, to, to bake the, 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 the powder coat onto the product, and I don't know if you have an oven that size. I mean, 
I'm trying to think there's parts of a, yeah, I mean, parts of a real mower are too big to fit into a um, into an oven. And even if it could, it's a good way to make your significant other mad at you. So I would not do that. If you're gonna powder coat it, get someone that actually powder coats for a living and just have them do it. Shouldn't be that expensive. All right, uh, Colin is up. He says, I may or may not have a new mower to show you going into the upcoming year. Nice, yeah, man, very, very cool. Don't don't play with me like that. Don't tease me like that, Colin. If you get one, let us uh, let me know. Send me pictures of it and we'll show everybody else. Show everyone else your, your new toy. You know, it's always cool to show off new equipment. All right, let me just see here if anyone on the gram has anything. Nope, all right, we'll continue on. Uh, Mason RC, he says, thank you for the props, Ron. I really appreciate it. Thank you again so much for what you do. No problem at all, man. I really appreciate you guys watching the content and just being part of the uh, the channel. It really, it really means a lot. I, um, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy helping folks out and uh, and learning learning more as you guys learn. And again, it's, it's, it gives me great ideas for for content, which is always which is always fun, right? Always, 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 always fun. All right, uh, next up is uh, Elevated Times. Elevated Times, he says, hey Ron, going to email you before I found your channel. Um, he says, I'm going to email before I found your channel and after photos of the lawn later tonight. I appreciate what you do. So you're gonna send me some pictures of before I found, you learned about the, the channel and then afterwards. Let me see, are they here yet? I do like a good before and after picture. Don't play with my feelings like that. Don't don't tease me like that, Elevated Times. Let's see here. I don't see anything in my email yet. Nothing in my inbox yet. He's probably out there saying, I gotta, I gotta get the angle just right. I gotta take the picture just right. Get the stripes, you know. So I'll look out for it. If I'm still on, I will I'll show them. And if, you know, worst case, we have to wait till next week, that's fine too. Feel free to send the pictures along. Next up is Oliver. He says, good evening and happy Friday. I noticed for a long time now, but I see a box of Yamazaki 12 in your background. You have a good eye. You have a good eye. I too also have that. A nice Japanese whiskey collection collection going. Yeah, man, that's a, you have a good eye. That that is That actually is what that is. I wouldn't think that with the camera, with the folks of the camera, you'd be able to make it out, but it is. It is, I do have a bottle of, uh, bottle of that. That one I have just there. I have one that's in the, that's in the, uh, the cabinet that I, I sip from occasionally, but that one is just there more as a prop. Cause I do, I do enjoy, uh, I do enjoy that whiskey, that whiskey. You know, fun fact, you know, when you, when I went to Tokyo a couple of years back, it's, it is just as hard as that is to find here. It was practically impossible to find it anywhere in, uh, in Tokyo, in Ginza. When I was going from place to place to place. We're like, no, we don't, we don't get it. Like literally when they make it, it, uh, it gets shipped overseas. Cause I guess we pay a lot more for it than they would. But I mean, it was very difficult to find uh, there in, um, in Japan where they actually make the stuff. Right. So but yeah, it's a great, it's a great whiskey. If you like whiskey, uh, you know, the Yamazaki 12 is a, a good one. It's not my favorite. My favorite is, um, I'll look for the next question here. My favorite, if I could have, if I could only have like one whiskey or bourbon for the rest of my life to have to, to, to drink on, um, that's not going to be crazy expensive. It would be, um, E.H. Taylor small batch. Like that's, that's, that's really good. I, it's really good. Like if you ever had Pappy's, um, it's not quite as not quite as good as Pappy's, but it's uh, it's for the price. It punches well above its weight, so it's uh, it's uh, it's really good. That and like the Weller's um, Weller's, I think it's the Weller's single malt. It's like a, it's like a purple. It's like a maroonish color uh, label that's on it. That's also a good one too. But those are all those are a lot more a lot more money. Um, like Pappy's and that Weller's are a lot more money than um, than Colonel E. H. Taylor, and it's it's really good. It's not there's not a whole lot in it between that and you know bourbons that cost a whole lot more money. So, and they're all, I think they're all made in the same place too. All right, next up is Two Trilla. He says, happy Friday, Ron and Sharp Action Gang. My Yard Mastery sprayer is not working and it turns on, will not spray when it comes to maintenance. Uh, what are your tips for longevity? Okay, so it turns on, but it's not working. It won't spray. Okay, so for maintenance with mine, I, I don't really do a whole lot of maintenance to mine, my sprayer, the, the way I, take care of my sprayers after I'm done spraying anything in it, whether it could be where it's like a, like biosimilants, fertilizer, Primo, herbicides, whatever, I, I never leave the sprayer dirty. So when I'm done with it, I, I run, I put a gallon of water or so in there and I run the, um, the sprayer for 30 seconds or so to flush whatever was in the sprayer out of the lines, out of the, out of the pump, out of the wand. So pretty much the only thing that's ever in my sprayer when it's put up is whatever residual water is left in the lines. Doing that, I've never really had an issue with it not spraying or anything or anything along those lines. So you may have some debris in there too, Trilla. Um, 
if you can send me um, send me an email. I have like a troubleshooting guy that I can get to you that will, because there's only a couple of things that could be causing this problem. Send me an, an email. It is, you probably have it already, but it's ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'll get you that troubleshooting guide. And based on that, what we should be able to figure out if something needs to be replaced, you could you know you get this, just the part that's needed to just to fix that. Um, but for in my case, my sprayer has largely been maintenance free, and I think I have I have one of the first ones. I think my the serial number on my sprayer is like number six. It's like five or six. So it's um it's it's been used a lot. You guys know it, it gets used at least every two weeks during the season, and it's been it's been great. And the way I keep my my all of them, like my flow zone, the chap, the chapin, chapin, however you want to pronounce it, and the yard mastery sprayer is whenever I am done using them, done spraying with them, I I clean them out. I don't leave I don't leave any products in the tank. I make sure there's only water that goes to the system. All right, guys and gals, we got 80 folks here in the live stream. If you have not yet hit the like button, you are wrong. You're doing it wrong. It's the definition of doing it wrong. Being in the live stream and not hitting the like button, it's a party foul. Don't make me have to go out and get like a yellow one of those yellow flags that you see the NFL referees do when I ever get to a certain point in the show and there's not enough likes, I'm going to throw the flag, throw the flag, put music on and go walk away and, you know, till, till the likes come up. So if you have not yet hit the like button and you're watching the content, please do so. It's a free way to support the channel. I really, really, really would appreciate it. It would lift my spirits given that I might be fighting a mole issue here for Lord knows how long. All right, next up is John Stewart. John Stewart's in the house and he says... I've been using Carbon Pro G monthly since September with great results. Love to hear that. We've had a couple nights of freeze, but not a super hard freeze. Would you recommend an application in December of Carbon Pro G or Essential G? I live in Southern Maryland. Temps for the next 10 days are in the low 60s to upper 40s. Thanks, Ron. Either one will work, John. So both Essential G and Carbon Pro G are made by Miramichi Green. Essential G is the newer formulation of their granular biostimulant product. It really is up to you. The uh, the thing with, I don't know what Carbon Pro G costs these days. If you have a place nearby locally where you can get it, that's going to be likely a little bit cheaper than getting Essential G because you're not paying for shipping. But again, Essential G is the is the newer formulation. Either you know, both of them are going to work well. Um, what I use on my lawn is Essential G. It's got the, the same biochar, the compost that's in Carbon Pro G, but it also contains reclaimed coffee grounds, contains a bit of um, humate, um, and a bit of silicon as well. So again, it's, it's like, think of it as almost like Carbon Pro G 2.0. So for that reason, I, I lean more towards Essential G. As far as whether you can apply it now, yeah, with you having temperatures in the 60s, yeah, you can absolutely get an application out. That, that's, that's not going to be a problem. Um, once you are, once the, the forecast is showing that you're going to get like uh, like freezing, like an extended uh, period of freezing weather, or, there, or there's snow in the forecast, that's when I would shut it down. You know what I mean? But if you are, temps are going to be like the lows at night are going to be in the 40s and the highs are going to be in the 60s to where, again, the ground isn't frozen. The, my rule is as long as the ground does not freeze where you are, you can apply a granular biosimilant pretty much year round. So in Georgia, we can do it pretty much year round. Maryland, you're a little bit further north than we are. So you have to kind of watch depending on um, on what mother nature's throwing your way, but either one will work. I would lean more toward, I would lean towards essential G. It's what I use on my lawn, but both are, are excellent products. Again, they're both, both made by folks that know what they're doing when it comes to uh, biostimulants in the granular form. So I hope that helps, John. Hope that helps. And then good on you, man. I'm glad that you're getting good results by doing that. I mean, that's that's uh that's the thing that people don't realize, right? By by incorporating by incorporating, you know, bio uh, granular biosimilants um and some biospectrum, like the microbial package, you're really able to get by with with putting less fertilizer into the soil and still getting a great response from your from your lawn. Like your lawn can look really nice while using less fertilizer, which is always nice, right? Because it saves money. Um, you're putting less fertilizer into the soil, which is also a good thing. And it's just, you know, there's, there's tons of benefits to it. So always good to, to incorporate, to have biosimilants as part of your, uh, as far as your, your, your lawn care program. It allows you to make use of what's already in the soil. You know, you're maximizing what's already there. And then any additional inputs you, you put in, you're getting more out of them, which is, uh, I'm a big fan of. Sean Murphy's up next. Actually, we gotta acknowledge Papa Mo's Low. What's going on, Papa Mo's Low? Thanks for coming to hang out, man. I see you here on the gram. I appreciate you. Sean Murphy's up next. He says, Happy Friday, Ron. All your lawn knowledge has really helped me maintain the best lawn on the cul-de-sac this year. And here's the thing, Sean. We can't just gloss over that. Being on the cul-de-sac, you know how I feel about that. If you're on the corner or a cul-de-sac, 
You gotta raise the bar. You know, you're not like like my lawn. Like I'm on a, I'm like in the middle, I'm like between Alex's lawn and another neighbor. Like you could just drive by my lawn and not even really see it because you know, no one ever stops. It's only if you're coming to the house that people that actually see my lawn. So so my like the standard I have to maintain isn't quite as high as you cool de sac and corner folks. But I'm glad to hear that you're uh, you're up to the challenge. You say keep doing what you're doing. Much love from Tampa. I appreciate that, Sean. Thank you so much. Keep uh, dominating, dominating humbly. You know, keep your lawn, keep keep the standard, raise the standard for the neighborhood, so that uh, your your neighbors will uh, will will ask you for tips and then make their lawns also look awesome as well. Because good, good looking lawns helps everyone, right? It's uh, it's visually nice. It looks nice for the neighborhood. And you know, the thing you can always say is this, right? But I had what time I had of your um, that, that asks you the question is what's the point? Like, what's the point of like going doing all this work and, you know, cutting your grass and main, doing all this stuff. Cause you have to just keep cutting it and cutting it and cutting it. I'm like, yeah, but if you use that, you can apply that, that argument to anything. Like why take a shower every day? Cause you're going to, you're going to get dirty again. You know, why cut your hair? It's just going to grow again. You know? So why, why cut your grass? Same thing. It's going to, it's just, it's a point of pride. And from a standpoint, right? If you looked at a lawn, if you drove by a house and you saw the lawn was well manicured, because I have like one of my friends, um, like um, one of my friends, his girlfriend is a realtor. And I asked her, I said, Hey, does having a nice lawn, does it really, does it help? Does it help with, um, with selling a house? She said, yeah, absolutely. Because whenever someone is coming, coming to a, a house to, to look at it from a curb appeal standpoint, one, it catches your eye more if it's, if it's a manicured lawn. And then if you, without even looking at the house, without even going in the house, if you sit back in the street, you look at a lawn at a property and the lawn is well taken care of, the shrubs are, are maintained, like just in your mind, you're saying if they take care of the grass this way, the house also likely has been maintained well. Doesn't necessarily always mean the case, right? But from a standpoint of just, you know, I'd say just raising the um, the appeal of your property overall, there's a lot to be said for taking care of your lawn. So I'm glad that you're you're looking good, man. Help uh, help the neighbors also get on board as well, and share the tips, man. Share the tips because remember, here's the thing, Sean. Even if they start doing your program, you're already you've already got like a year on them. You're you're ahead of them a bit, and as long as you're mowing more than them, you're gonna win. Because once once we get to you know once you get to the point where they're they've got rid of the weeds or soil testing, they're they're got a good nutrient program. He or she who mows most with sharp equipment wins. So it, it becomes a, a who has more time to mow their lawn is what's gonna determine who looks uh, who looks better. So you can still stand out even with you helping the neighbors out. That's what I'm trying to say. Shortgrass Living is up next. He says, good evening, Ron. I did a split application of Prodiomy towards the end of September and plan to do a second application in January. Just purchased Spectacle Flow today. Should I use that in January instead? Mm, no, what I would do is if you, if you order, if you already got Spectacle, like if you, you already have it or you ordered it and it's on its way to you, I would do that like now. I would do that now. I would do an application of that now and then left that, and then you, then you're good. That will cover you until, you know, February, March, whenever you do your spring pre-emergence. So if it were me, you've already done prodiamine in September. Good. If you have spectacle on hand, I would do that. I would use that now because this is the time of year when spectacle really shines, man. Because I mean, the, the thing that spectacle is, in my opinion, better than really any other um, pre-emergence that I've, I've come across, or at least for warm season turf anyway. Um, at preventing is annual bluegrass. And the time to prevent annual bluegrass is now. It's not in January, it's now. So if you've already got your hands on some or you're gonna have some again in a day or two, that's what I would put out. I would put out Spectacle Flow now and then you know you can spray pr prodiamine or dithiopyr in the springtime as your spring pre-emergent. Like I would I would use it, I would use one of those then and use Spectacle Flow now. That is how I would do it. Good question, man. And uh, congrats, you, you, you in the big leagues now. Moving up to the big, the big boy, big girl uh, um, pre-emergence, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a, you know, gotta donate a kidney to be able to buy it. But it's a, it's a great product. And again, it's really not that bad if you have someone to split it with. If you have a, you know, a friend or, or neighbor or someone you can, you can sell some of it to. Then it's, it's really not, not that bad. And it, it re it's as far as a fall pre-emergent product. It's really hard to beat Spectacle, man. It's, it's a good, I, again, I've used, I, I'm gonna say I've used them all, but I've used all, all the common ones for worms using grass. I've used uh, Dithiopyr, I've used Prodiamine at different different um, application rates. I've done the poor man Spectacle Flow, which these days, given the price of herbicides, it really isn't that poor, which is Prodiamine, Simazine, and Amazequin. And I've done Spectacle. So I've done like the, the most common, the common combinations and Spectacle Flow is better than the other ones, than the other, than the other concoctions by far for keeping POA out of your lawn. 
All right, next up is uh, Jared George. He says, it could be Poa or it could be random sunshade, cool season grass. This rookie planted in the spring and forgot about now and they stick out like a sore thumb. It could be. You'll, annual bluegrass, you'll know because it has, um, it's gonna, in the middle, it's gonna, it's gonna produce a, a, like a white seed head. It's gonna be like a flower. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like this, Jared. Let me see here. You know, I believe I've got I've got it in the certainty product description, but I think I've also got a picture of it in this. So how to get rid of annual bluegrass poa annua in your lawn. So you see the seed heads there. I may have another one. That's another that's another example of what it'll look like. Um, and then again, yeah. So you see the grass in the middle, you see the white seed heads there. Like that's uh, that's what you're looking for for it to be poanu. And again, certainty is excellent for controlling it. If uh, if that's in fact what you have on your lawn, you just gotta gotta bump the rate up. Gotta gotta go gotta go with the big boy rate, and it will it will take care of it. And if you're interested in that, Jared, I will link that blog post here in the chat for you, so you will be good to go. So at Jared George, there you go. How to get rid of annual bluegrass in your warm season lawn. All right, uh, next is Mason RC. He says, regarding NutriKelp, do you apply this monthly during the growing season or is this a product you only apply once or twice a year? Not at all, uh, Mason. So uh, NutriKelp, Biospectrum, and either Release 901C or Release Zero gets sprayed on my lawn every two weeks. So if you look at the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit, so if you go to Shop and then Lawn Fertilizer, if you go to this kit, which is what I put together with Miramichi Green, you'll see the kit includes three products. It includes Biospectrum, which you already have, it includes Nutrish Kelp, and it also includes either Release Zero or Release 901C. So the difference between Release Zero and Release 901C is if you want a fertilizer along with your liquid biostimulant, then you go with Release 901C. If you have a liquid fertilizer that you already like to use, then you go with Release Zero. So the differences between Release Zero and Release 901C is that one contains fertilizer, the other one does not. As far as the makeup of these, Release Zero and Release 901C are the only products, or the only liquid products that Miramichi Green makes that has 10% micronized carbon. So this is, a, this is as far as this accelerating um, anything that you mix with it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's excellent for that. So if you're spraying fertilizer along with it, it helps the fertilizer work better. If you're using herbicides, say you're spraying a herbicide on your lawn, right? Um, you can mix Release Zero along with it and it's gonna help with the uptake as well. As far as NutriKelp, uh, this is a kelp product. It's a 24% kelp product. It contains 2% micronized carbon. So pretty much if it's not Release Zero or not Release 901C um, they're in their liquid fertilizer line, it's 2% micronized carbon. Um, this I spray every two weeks, like this entire concoction that you know, release, uh, release 901C or release zero, I'm sorry, release 901C or release zero, Nutri Kelp and Biospectrum, every two weeks that gets sprayed on my lawn along with Primo Max and a, um, a micronutrient like, um, like, like uh, Nutrizolve. So to answer your question, it is an every, it's an every two weeks type thing. So just like you can spray Biospectrum a couple, like every, um, Every two weeks, you can also spray release uh, 901C. You can also spray NutriKelp every two weeks as well. As far as the rates, like I've I've played with different uh, rates um, as far as the, the those products go. The label will tell you, like Miramichi Green will tell you two ounces all the way up to seven ounces. What I would tell you is the sweet spot to where you're getting like, like the most bang for the bucks. You're not using more of the product than you absolutely need to to get a great result is that three ounce per thousand rate. So you can do two ounces. You can go, that, that will work too but three ounces per thousand of NutriKelp or, or Release Zero or Release 901C, like that is, uh, that's the sweet spot I find that uh, that works well as far as getting a good response and getting the most out of the product. So yeah, Mason, if you are, since you already have Biospectrum, you could buy like a gallon of Release 901C or, and or a gallon of NutriKelp and, and um, spray that, you know, you can spray it once a month if you want to, but I do it every two weeks because it goes in the tank along with, um, I'll show you what else I do. I'll show you my monthly, my, my every two week, my every two week stack, what it was this year. Next year, it might change a little bit depending on um, on some stuff that I'm working on. Um, but my my the stack that I spray every two weeks when the lawn is actively growing is Primo Max at half rate, 
The Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit, so release 901C and Nutric Help and Biospectrum at three ounces per thousand. And then for a micronutrient, I'll throw a little bit of Nutrisolve in the tank as well. This goes in the tank at six ounces per thousand. So it ends up being like 24 ounces of that with, um, with four gallons of water. It ends up being 12 ounces of each product with four gallons of water. And this ends up being uh, where we, Prima Max ends up being uh, half an ounce, so 0.5 fluid ounces with four gallons of water. And that whole blend, you can mix it all and spray it all at one time, and that is uh, gonna cover 4,000 square feet. And I do that every two weeks when the, when the lawn's actively growing. So hope that helps, sir. And uh, yeah, if you liked, liked the results you got with Biospectrum, you start introducing Release 901C or Release Zero along with, um, with NutriCalp, it's good stuff. Kelp's great, man. It's help. It helps. Um, it helps with stress resistance in the turf. It's a good. It's a great additive to your um to your lawn care program. Oh wow. Okay, so I got some pictures here from elevated um elevated times before and after. Let me see if I can get these here in the chat. So there's before. Man, you weren't kidding. Good lord. Ooh. Oh man. I mean, it's um. Let me. I'm gonna have to create a separate folder for this. Elevated. <laughs> All right, picture number one goes there. And thank you. Thank you for sending reasonably sized pictures. Some of those people, people send me pictures and they're like 10 megabytes each. I'm like, guys, come on, man. I mean, I got to stream this. Let's, let's uh, work with me. Help, help me help you. Help me help you. <laughs> Send a picture that's reasonably sized. All right, so his before and after. Let me see if I can get these organized. Um, we'll just call this uh, B1. Um, A1, um, this is ooh, B2. I can tell you your air rating, it looks like. And uh, ooh, yeah, it came a long way, man. I got, I, got to, I got to hand it to you. And this is A2. And then next up we have, we'll say B3. All right, so let's do the before and afters first. So, all right, so his befores, this is what Elevated Times Lawn looked like. Let me see if I can find his comment. We can go back here really quick. So we have the correct context of what we were, what we're talking about. Um, why can I not find your, here we go. Yep, here we go. All right, so here's the email based on, on what he, uh, his before and after. So before, um, I mean, it's not, it's not terrible. I mean, I've seen, I've seen worse than that. I mean, that's that's not that's not bad, but it, I mean, that lawn needs some love. I mean, needs some love. So that's before one. It looks like you tried to aerate or something. That's before two. And this is before three. Again, lawn's not living its best life right now, but it's, uh, you know, it's got potential. And now the after, after getting on that golf course lawn program is boom. Wow. Look at that color, it looks great. I mean, color looks awesome. And that's picture one and then picture two. So to go from this and this and this to, to, uh, to this and that is a pretty big accomplishment, man. Very nice, very nice job. You know what, we're gonna clap it up for that. Give you some dap, I like it. All that hard work, all that consistency and hard work will, uh, it definitely will pay off. It absolutely will pay off. And some of you guys that are new to the channel will say, well, how on earth did he do that? How did he, like, what is the recipe? What is the recipe for getting a lawn that looks like that? Pray tell. Now, I can give you the complicated way or I can give you the, I can give you the easy way. So let's do, let's do the easy way first. The easy way, in a nutshell, is to do these things. If you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and click on Shop, and you just scroll down, past the collections pages, past all that, Pass the gift cards, pass the Golf Course Lawn Academy, and you go to this infographic that explains, in a nutshell, what it takes to get a great looking lawn. This is what I argue is like, you know, if you've ever played Legend of Zelda, it's like the Triforce, but this is like, I guess, the Pentaforce, right? It's like the, the five things you gotta do to get a great looking lawn. So th step one is eliminate weeds using the correct herbicide that is for, for your grass type and the weed you're trying to control. Step two, get a soil test done, because then that is going to give you the answer as far as what you need to be using in step three, which is to fertilize your lawn based on said soil test results. And then step four, the thing that most people do not do nearly enough, but is super important, is mowing. So you mow, mow, and mow some more. And then based on that, if you do these things, 
steps one, step two, step three, step four. Not even necessarily in this order. I'd say step two and three you should do in order, but even if you decided, hey, I'm gonna start mowing my lawn a whole lot and then I'm gonna start cleaning up weeds, that can work too. But this is the, this is the result, the, the, the order that most people do. If you do these four things and you do step four consistently, hence why you need to mow, mow, and mow some more, and when you think you've mowed enough, mow one more time, it is practically impossible, not saying impossible, but practically impossible for you to not get what you see in step five, to not get a lawn that looks amazing. Because a, an awesome lawn is a byproduct of those things, a byproduct of having like one plant in, like one, like having, being a monoculture, having it be one dominant plant in the lawn, right? Your grass type, um, that you identify any nutrient deficiencies, that you address those nutrient deficiencies with fertilizer, biosimilants, and then you mow the lawn, and then the byproduct, which you just can't even help it, is to get a lawn that looks like that. And I think most people would take that. You know, most people would, would, would not would not be mad to have a lawn that looks like that. You know, now granted, yes, you can start going taking it up a notch and getting crazy with it. You can get like real mowing, and you can start really, you know, you can go as you can go as wild as you want with it. But at, at, at its core, it's just those those four things that leads to the fifth. Get rid of the weeds, soil tests, fertilize, mow your grass. If you do that, you got a great looking lawn. Thanks again, Elevated Times. I appreciate the pictures. Thank you for all the love and support and can't wait to see how the lawn looks next year. Because the nice thing that you find too, guys, is that when you start, like, say when you, you have a, a lawn like his, right? Where you started it out at the beginning of this year, this season, and you, you begin, you start with a lawn that's not, you know, it's, it needs a lot of love, right? And then you get to the point where the lawn looks like this, this is your new baseline. You know what I mean? And granted, while to us this looks good, I'm sure if you sat down and you talked to him, he would be able to point out all the different areas that are that's what's wrong with it, where there's a low spot, where the color isn't as good. But the point is, every year, the baseline gets higher and higher. So it becomes, it becomes easier and easier to maintain a great looking lawn the longer you do it. And it's, you know, from where he was to where he is now, next year it's gonna be even that much better. As long as he sticks with the same program, you know, continues with his mowing, feeding the lawn regularly, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna get incredible. It's gonna look a whole lot better than it even does now, if you can imagine that. So great work again. Keep going, and I can't wait to see what 2024 brings as far as your lawn care results. Cool guy says go Knowles. Yeah, man, I forget that the, the Seminoles are still in in the um in the running. They still they have, they have a pretty good record. They're still in the running for um. I guess they technically could get in the playoffs. Is that possible? I think so. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it'd be nice. To, I mean, for Georgia to do it, it's been a really long time since a team has gone, has three-peated. So it would be uh, it would be pretty pretty cool. It's funny. I was talking to a, a, um, a buddy of mine that is a, he's a die-hard Georgia fan, like true and true, has like, has been, has had season tickets for like as long as I've known him. Like, I mean, got Georgia tag on his truck, just loves Georgia, you know, just, I mean, like the the atypical like Bull, Georgia Bulldog fan. I told I was actually talking to him today. He called me and I said, "Dude, do you ever think that you would live to see the day when Georgia would be potentially make, being able to make you know recent history by winning, doing it three times in a row?" He says, "Man, listen, I don't know if I was gonna live long enough to see it happen one time in my lifetime." So um, you know, or, or ever since the, the the time before, which I think was 80, 82, late early early eighties, I think is when they won it before this recent this recent um string of wins. So, uh, so yeah, he didn't think he was going to see it ever again. So we'll see. We'll see. If they show up to play, they can make it happen. All right. Next up is Demarculus Thompson. He says, greetings, Ron. I am celebrating one year following your content. Thank you for all the tips. You are most welcome, sir. Thank you so much for the consistency and for the support of watching the content. Hopefully your lawn looks the best it ever has. That's what I, uh, that's what I always like to hear, you know, because Following the content is one thing, but what I really live for is when I get emails with from folks and lawns that look like that, or lawns that look like that. Like that, that really, that's what really, I mean, I get more out of that than making my lawn look good. I enjoy working on my lawn because it's like, it's like therapy for me, right? But I mean, like I've, I've done, I've, like I enjoy it, but like seeing someone else do that, especially when they come from a space where they're, they, they came from. I just want a great looking lawn. I want my lawn to look good and I don't know how to do it. And then in a season, it goes from looking like not that great to looking you know, like one of the best lawns in the neighborhood to whether they're the envy of their neighborhood and the envy of their street. That's really cool. You know what I mean? So that's what I live for. I live to get the, the emails and content from folks that say, hey, the, the content helped play a small part in helping my lawn look really, really good. All right, next up is Mark Romano. He says, make a whack-a-mole video. I've already got one. I've already got one, but I may have to do, may have to run it back. You may have to be a part, a part two to it. 
uh, part two of the whack-a-mole video. But it's, moles are, moles are horrible. You know why moles are so bad? Mark, I just heard your comment, and I make my blood boil all over again, is that it makes your lawn look like, the, it makes it look like it's diseased. Like you just see like the, the tunnels all over it. It's just, mm. I mean, if, if they could just, if they could just do like just one area, just say in one little spot and just, you know, hunt for earthworms there, we might be able to coexist, but they don't do that. They don't, they, they, they literally like burrow tunnels and some really nasty pattern all over the lawn. It looks like the lawn has like leprosy or something. It's just, it's, it's terrible. I just, if people like moles, like if you like moles, I'm sorry, but I'm just not, I'm, I'm not, a, not a fan. Not a fan. And he's, he's gonna catch that smoke if he doesn't go away. John Stewart is up next. He says, can I bring my pit bull down? She will have that mole in five minutes. Anyway, hello. I put down two applications of Carbon Pro G since September. Should I put down another one in December or Essential G? You can, I think you were on, um, you asked the question on Facebook, John. You can, you can do, yes, you can. Yeah, I think you're the one in Maryland. No issue with that at all. You can do either one, either one. I go with Essential G, but if you can get Carbon Pro G locally, you know, you, it's going to produce a great result too. Both products are excellent. Again, they're both made by Miramichi Green. Um, the difference between the two I've already kind of gone over. Um, if you want to know even more detail as far as what the differences are, I have actual, I have a video on this topic because I knew, you know what? At some point, someone's going to ask me, what's the difference between Carbon Pro G and Essential G? So you know what? I should just save myself a lot of time and just make a video. It's only four minutes. So it's not that long. You know how I am on my content. I'd like it to be any longer than it needs to be. And if you watch that video, it will break down the differences between Carbon Pro G and Essential G. Long short of it is, I use Essential G, but they're both excellent products. And if you want to watch that video, John, you can see Essential, let's call it Essential G, uh, G versus Carbon Pro G. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Long short of it is like Carbon Pro G is a, is a product that, um, Let's go slash site one, um, ask Miramichi Green to engineer for them, to make for them. Because the, 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 the history is like the first product was um, carbonized PN, which is their, their soil top dressing type product, which is half biochar, half compost. Great product. Problem is you can't really apply it using a, a spreader. You can't use like an Earthway or a Scott spreader to put it down. You have to use like, um, like an eco, like one of those like top dressing machines. So it's not super friendly for most people to easily apply on their lawns. So you imagine taking Carbon Pro G and turning it into a prill. And that essentially is what, um, to, sorry, take, imagine taking Carbonized PN and turning it into a prill. And that essentially is what Carbon Pro G is. So really comparing them, Carbonized PN and Carbon Pro G are a better comparison. They're basically, they're very similar. They're basically the same product. One being a, a prill product and one being a soil type product than comparing Carbon Pro G to um, Essential G. Essential G is a newer formulation. It's almost like, if you take like Humachar, Carbon Pro G, and um, Carbonized PN, they are all from the same, around the same timeline. They're all, they're all basically similar, the same, they're pretty the same products, similar ingredients, right? Uh, Essential G is a newer, is the newer out of that, out of that, that bunch, out of that batch. So, uh, so there you go. All right, Larry is in the house. He gave me a super chat. Thank you so much, Larry. You got me out here, just sitting here, just dancing and jibbing and not getting any kind of love. I appreciate, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate the love and support. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat, Larry. He says, here's my fee for being late. It's okay. I will, uh, we will tolerate it. And for that, sir, your name, why did my window go over there? You will have your name in lights for whatever that means to you. So here you go. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate the super chat and bam, there you go. So you can you can tell any of your friends or family says, hey, listen, I'm a pretty big deal. Look, if you go to the live stream at the one hour and 25 minute mark, my name in life, you see me up on the screen there, kind of a big deal. So there you go. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate all of the love and support. And it turns out you have a question. So I will also answer that as well as part of the super chat. He says, hey, Ron, uh, late to the party due to cleaning up tons of leaves and mowing. See, now for that, we got to give you a pass. You are out there doing the work, cleaning up the lawn. Doing, I, I, I get it, man. No, there's no worries at all with that. He says, it's been two weeks since I spread the 12 24. How much longer do I need to wait for another application with my Earthway? So you got an Earthway. You got a fertilizer you really like, and you're like, I just want to keep just fertilizing, fertilizing, fertilizing. What I would say, Larry, for the granular products, I like to give it four weeks between applications. So for liquids, 
for like the carbon kit, for Primo. You can spray those every two weeks, or I spray those every two weeks. For the granular products, I like to do it once a month. I mean, there's just really no need to do it more uh, more frequently than that. Um, if you, depending on the rate you use, if you use a, like a like a very light rate to where which I wouldn't have recommended, um, then you technically could do the granular more than once in a month. But what I would say is set up your granular fertilization where you're doing it once a month. Uh, I like to get about a, about half a pound of nitrogen from granular fertilizer out once every four weeks and then uh, use liquids to supplement that. So all in, you end up around seven tenths of a pound of nitrogen, which for most turf grasses works works pretty well. For Bermuda, people say Bermuda needs a little bit more than that, but if you're doing all the other stuff that I do, it it does just fine at seven tenths, seven tenths of a pound. Um, you have fescue, um, which doesn't have the same end requirement, nitrogen requirements that Bermuda does. So it's, again, I would say every four weeks. I know it's been two weeks and you like how the lawn looks, but I would not go out and apply, do another application now and give it a couple more weeks and then apply again. If you wanna scratch your itch to get out there and spray something on the lawn or do something on the lawn, that's a fertilizer type product, do liquids, do this. Go get the carbon kit if you don't have it already. Go to the Gulf Force Lawn Store, go to shop, go to Lawn Fertilizer and get this. Get the 901C version of it. Get the 901C carbon kit and you can spray that every two weeks. And um, that, cause that would mimic more of what I do on um, in my lawn care program. If you and if you want to see a breakdown of that, I will send you the blog on spoon feeding, which is right here. Breaks down, you know, fertilization frequency for liquids and for granulars. Again, this is not the only way to do it, but it's how I like to do it. That I think is a good balance between like what you're spending and the results that you get from it. So, if you um, if you're interested in that, L RCXD, Larry, you can check out that blog right there. Why spoon feeding is awesome and why I think you should start doing it. And for most of you folks that are here in the live stream tonight, you guys are all like excellent candidates for it because if you're someone that is watching a lawn care live stream on a Friday night, by definition, you're like a lawn care nerd. So you being out in your lawn every two weeks, shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, let me check over here on the Instagram. I don't see anybody, any questions. Okay, yeah, so I have a question here. I do have a question from... Uh, Kelby Ruiz, he says, uh, should I be putting down pre-emergent now? It depends. It depends, Kelby. Strictly speaking, no, but it depends on, on, um, on what you, on, on what you applied in September, August, like late August, September timeframe, um, and what your goals are. Um, I am a fan of, of getting your pre-emergent down in the early September, late August timeframe. And if you use the higher rate, let's say, let give you an example. Say you use a product like Spectacle Flow, right? Which is for warm season grass only. If you apply this at the rate that's around 0.2 ounces, 0.20 fluid ounces per thousand in late August, early September, you're done. You're pretty much done until February timeframe next year. Now, if you applied this at the lower rate, say a tenth of an ounce, or you say you applied prodiamine in September, late, late August, September, you can benefit from another pre-emergent application because prodiamine really doesn't have the legs to, to do it for a single application to give you great control, great coverage all the way until springtime. Uh, Spectacle does. Like this on the low end will give you six months of coverage. If you, I mean, on, per the label, they say up to 10 months, but really um, a single application of Spectacle at the high rate is, is really all you're going to need to carry you from September into um uh, February, February timeframe to you do your spring pre-emergent app. So the answer is it depends. It depends on what you've already done. If you, again, if you've done prodiamine and you applied it at, at, at a lower rate, if you want to use something like spectacle now, I think that would be a great idea. And, and, and if you're doing, you're applying spectacle now, I would go with the rate of 0 0.10 ounces. So a 10th of a fluid ounce per thousand square feet. And that's going to carry you into, uh, into the spring. An easy way to measure that out is if you have an old Primo Max bottle, so if you, if you use Primo Max or if you use uh, a Celeprin, use either one of these, right? This, the tip and pour that that, that the product comes in, once this is once you use this up, I take one of these. I have one of these that I've, I've relabeled. I've got like tape all over it, got written all over it saying, hey, this is, this is a spectacle. And I use this for measuring it out because it makes it really easy to measure out a tenth of a fluid ounce. You see, it's got the markings on there. So it's really easy for taking a product like this, which is, it doesn't take a whole lot of it, to precisely measure and make sure you're putting the right amount of product down. So the answer to your question is, it depends. Um, and hopefully I gave you 
the scenarios of where you you could be doing a pre-emergent application this time of year. I did. I did one. I did a second application of Spectacle today because in September I did a light rate. I did a lo the lower end of the application rate, and I did that just just to play with it, just to see you know how. If I I've, I know that 0 0.20 once in August September works great as far as controlling POA until springtime. If we cut it in half, what kind of control do I get? I don't know the answer to that because I've never actually done it. So this year I'm doing that and just to, so if I get that question from someone, I'll be able to say it's the same thing. So you can either do half applications, split apps, or you can do one app and either way it works great. So hope that helps, sir. I know there's a whole lot of it depends in my answer, but the most accurate answer is it depends. So hopefully I gave you the reasons, that, like the caveats of as far as you know, the decision tree is whether or not you need to come down to pre-emergent again in December, yes or no. All right, we got Offroad NV saying happy Friday. What's going on, uh, Offroad? We got Doug Flanders in the house. What's going on, Doug? Hopefully you're doing well, man. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow at Karate. And yeah, that's it so far on the gram. Back to YouTube. Okay, so where did we leave off? It was Larry. Larry's bid for more um, to be able to do a second uh, application of fertilizer. And we, I, God, I think the answer was nice. We gently told Larry, hey, listen, man, we understand the enthusiasm. We understand what you're trying to do, but here's why you might want to might wanna wait. So I think, I think he's going to be good. I think Larry's going to follow that. Okay. Uh, next, we have Brandon Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Brandon Kennedy, he says, Yard Mastery Sprayer, Ron, I have the same issue with mine. Uh, turning it on, but not spraying. Tell him to try turning it on, quick disconnect the sprayer, and hold down the spray nozzle until liquid comes out, then connect the spray nozzle again, it should spray. Hmm, I've never had to do that, Brandon, uh, but it's something for, for you to try. Um, the person that was, was talking about it, you can give that a shot. Again, I have not experienced any of those problems with my sprayer, but again, I, the only thing that I ever leave in it is water. The other thing I, I could see too is if you got some debris in the tank somehow, like that will cause the pump to not work properly. And if you, it's not, it's not difficult to do, but if you, you, you open the sprayer up and you, you, uh, you pull the, pull the pump out. It's pretty easy to see if there's, there's trash in there. If you remove that, you get rid of that and the spray will start working again. Again, it's, it's a pretty simple, pretty simple device. There's not, there's not a whole lot in it to really go wrong. So, um, so yeah, but give that what Brandon's saying a shot. And what I would encourage you guys, if you, if you don't do it already is get in the habit of cleaning your sprayer when you're done with it. Like when you're, when you're done spraying, whatever you're spraying, run, like just put some, put clean water in it, run like water through the sprayer for 30 seconds. And again, I've done that for years with all my sprayers. I've got a shape and I've got a flow zone. I've got the yard mastery and none of them from have failed. And I use my stuff a lot. I use my equipment a lot. And they've, they've, um, you know, they always work great. There's no issues with gumming it gumming up or, you know, issues with, um, with pressure or anything like that. So something to consider. I know it's like an additional step when you're done working on the lawn, but it's, it has worked well for me. So it's something to keep in mind. All right. Next is Justin Judkins. He is saying, uh, just stopping by to say hi. Hope you had a great week. It was pretty good until about five o'clock today, Justin, but it's okay. We will um, we will remedy that. Hopefully the mole got the idea that this lawn is not the one and he's going to go somewhere else. Tito Serrano says, are there any new products you'll be putting out in the future? Maybe. Maybe. I do have some stuff in the works, but again, until it's ready and to where I can, you know, I, I'm not going to talk about it until it's actually, actually available. Um, I'm working on some stuff. Is it going to be available before the start of, or early next year? That's the goal. We shall see. We shall see, Tito. But I'll be, I will tell you that what's on the store already is really a lot of what you, I mean, like what you can get a great result using those products, getting, get using what's on the store. What, um, the, some of the things I'm working on will, will supplement or will, um, can replace some things or some things that are in my program that I think are better. Like I've been testing, like I was secretly testing uh, some of them this year and I really like the results that I got with it. So it's just a matter of making sure that like all the hard part of actually bringing something to the market can, can happen, you know, like packaging and all this, all this other stuff. So we shall see. Yes. When can't say, but it is in the works. T1000 is up next. He says, happy Friday y'all, which is a good Southern greeting. And for those of you guys in the North, y'all means you all. And he says, hit the like button. Thank you so much, uh, T1000. 
Mark Luna is in the house next. He says, hey, Ron and Lawn Fam, quick question. Do you use your turf rake while on the lawn while it's dormant? Do I turf rake the lawn when it's dormant? Yes, occasionally, uh, Mark. So whenever I want to just set the stripes, when the lawn is completely dormant, I just want to make the, the, the dormant stripes look really nice. I'll get out there with a turf rake and I'll run that on the lawn. It is not strictly necessary. It's not, there's no reason to really turf rake your lawn this time of year. You don't need to do it. I do it strictly for vanity reasons. Strictly as an aesthetic because it makes the stripes look incredible, but you don't have to do that. I would say you can wait till springtime and, and do it when the lawn's actively growing, but as far as like helping your dormant lawn look really nice as far as the stripes go, you can absolutely do that without issue. If you're going to, what I would say is raise the turf rake up a bit higher than where you would normally run it when the, when the turf is actively growing, because the, the idea with this is not to really clean debris out, because there's not really any debris, it's really just to kind of to gently comb the grass in the direction that you want the stripes to, uh, to, to show up in. So, hope that helps, sir. Good question. And uh, I will give you one warning, Mark. If you decide to, to turf rake your lawn when it's dormant, you are gonna get weird looks from the neighbors. They're gonna be like, why is this crazy person out mowing their lawn or out you know, messing with their lawn when it's, um, when it's dormant out? You probably don't care. I mean, I don't care about it, but just something to keep in mind. I don't wanna tell you all the benefits and not you know, tell you some of the downsides you might be facing that you know, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get that look. You're gonna be that guy that's out mowing dormant grass. You know, you may even get someone driving by and they may even get like a give it a rest. You may, that might happen if someone's driving by. But if you're good with it, by all means, go for it. All right, next up is Devin. He says, what's up, Ron? It's currently snowing. Ooh, don't bring that here. He says, can't wait for the 2024 season. I hear you, Devin. So we're looking forward to seeing how you uh, how you turn the lawn around, man. That new lawn you got, how you, uh, you, you top dress it and really bring it to the level that we are we are expecting. And, but you can keep the snow. So you can send us pictures of the lawn. You can tell us about the progress of it, but no snow. We don't want any snow in Georgia. No snow. It's, uh, it's, we do not do snow well here at all. Even a little bit of snow not, does, not, does not work out well. So, uh, so yeah. I'm sure the course looks beautiful now, that right now with, it, with snow all over it. I'm sure if you got some pictures, you got to send them to me or post them on Instagram so I can check it out. I'm sure, it looks pretty cool. All right, next is Gary Kellett Jr. He says, I don't have to say, um, I don't have much to say about grass since I have snow on my cool season lawn. Kind of a common theme now with the cool season folks. But I went old school and watched some of the old streams. Big difference from the white background till now with the lights. It is, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, here's the thing. I It pains me to go back. Like literally I have like a physical response when I go back and I look at my old content. I'm like, why did anybody watch this? I almost, I almost want to apologize to the viewers because it's like, it's so badly filmed and, and it's true. You know, Gary, you know, lighting to, I mean, we're just kind of hanging out here anyway, because it's, it's December and we're talking about, about grass. It lighting, if I have to tell anyone anything, if you are, if you want to learn how to take like good pictures or do video, lighting is, is, by far the most important thing to getting to getting a great image. Like you literally, you paint with light. You know, you paint the, the, the image, the mood you want it to show, um, all comes from lighting. Like, you know, the lights that are in the background, like if you look right now, I've got, I've got, there's one, two, one, two, three, four, four, there's six lights that are on in here right now. And if you if you change any of them, if you turn any of them off, it changes the look of the uh, the live stream. For example, if we, if we turn off the back lights, we can do that. Uh, if we turn off these, let me see that and that still looks pretty good, right? Still looks okay. But the separation like me, like me and in the background, like the shelf, it all kind of looks flat, right? I don't really stand up from, from the, from the background. So the, the whole purpose, the only reason for the lights in the background is just to give some separation to kind of give a nice, um, you know, nice pop of color, make it interesting to look at. Um, there's a, a light I'm not going to turn off, but there's a light over there. It's called a hair light, which is, you see like the rim of light that's on me and on my shoulders here. There's a light that's firing down to produce that. Fun fact, if you ever start, if you ever want to notice it, watch, if you look at the news, not, not that you need to look for this, you go look at the news, you look at any kind of talking head video that's professionally done, you will see that. You'll see like a light, like, a, like an outline um, that's normally from a light that you cannot see. And then there's the key light, which is the main light here, which is the light that's lighting, doing most of what you see. If I turn that off, that's what it looks like in here without that. So kind of important to have that. And then finally is a light that's over here to my left, which is a fill light. So if you, you see how my face looks right now, if I turn that off, it looks okay, but this is a little bit too dramatic for lawn care. Like you see this side of my face is 
like it's lit and this side is like it's fallen off quite a bit which is okay if you're you know if you're doing like a a, a movie and you're trying to create like a really dramatic scene but for lawn care probably a little bit too heavy so balancing a little bit of light off the wall that's next to me right here that you guys can't really see that's right there um just even though this side of my face is still darker than this side it's le there's less contrast it looks a little bit more balanced that balanced that way so lighting is super important if you want to take really good pictures learn lighting or if you want to do great pictures or video learn lighting a, a really quick tip is whatever you're taking if you're taking a picture of someone have the light source between have the person between the light source and the camera so if you're taking a picture of someone outside have the sun behind them and so have the, so be sun person or sun subject camera because you you get a natural rim light because the sun is firing behind them you get that natural natural nice outline and they're not gonna have raccoon eyes which are like they're squinting because the sun is like blasting in their face too so if just if you want like a, an easy way to use natural light the sun should be behind you and that's a that's a great way to get to get good looking images especially if you shoot them shoot the pictures in the morning or in the afternoon like when the sun is lower in the sky so there you go crash course on taking nice pictures and cinematography a lot more to it than that but that's in a nutshell how you can get like decent looking images even with a an iphone camera you can you can it's all about lighting lighting is the most important thing all right next up is who do we have next we got larry he says remember i use a rotary and did a light app and it was spotty and yes i have an iphone one kit so here we go so oh okay i got you i got you larry okay yes 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 okay so yes okay now so you do have a mitigating factor i remember when you did you did your first app fertilizer application, you did use the rotary spreader and the application was uneven. So in that case, yeah, I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine with you going out with the Earthway and doing a proper app. Go at the, again, low rate. So on the bag, there's going to be a rate for 0.5, like half a pound of nitrogen and a rate for um, a, set, a spreader setting for 0.9, you're gonna use the lower one. So use the point, the half a pound of nitrogen rate for the Earthway on that spreader is gonna be like a setting of, go with like a setting of like nine or 10. Go with nine, go with nine. Um, and given, cause you're right, I, I forgot that about your lawn. When you, the first time you applied it, it wasn't a very good application. You kind of use one of those, you know, hand cranks um, spreaders, which is not great. So now that you have the Earthway, yes. If you want to go do one now, that, cause it's really going to be your, your first proper app. Um, but just, just to begin, to be on the safe side, stick to the lower side. So a, a setting of nine, with the, uh, the 2050 should be just fine. It should produce a pretty good result. And when you're doing it, you're not gonna really, because the prill is so fine, you don't be surprised you don't really see it being thrown because when it's, when it's running, coming out of the spreader, this, um, this is the stuff here, guys. This is stuff that he's using. You can see how fine, if it'll focus, see how fine that is. To, to put it in perspective, this is like the tip of a pen and that is the prill. So you see it's almost like powder. So when you whenever you're, it's coming out of the earthway, you're, it's not going to show up like a fertilizer like this would, you know, like that's, that's big. These are much bigger prill. Um, so that's the only thing I, I tell you, if you've not done this yet, but yes, that's fine. Setting of nine is what I would say. And, um, uh, enjoy, have fun, have fun. So you didn't give me all the, all the, the, the mitigating factors before you asked the question, you know? So cool, Larry, enjoy, have fun, man. Take pictures. Let us know how it, uh, how it, how it comes along. Next up is Don Summers. Don Summers is up next. He says, hello, Ron and everybody in the chat. Not much to talk about as far as lawn care goes. Very rainy here in Michigan. Everyone have a blessed weekend. Yeah, that's what it's going to be like here in Georgia, Don. It's going to be plenty of, um, of rain this weekend. Rain and football. Rain and football. The SEC Championship. My fantasy team. I got to watch, um, watch football on Sunday. I don't have to, but I, I guess I can follow football on Sunday. I'm eight. I think I'm... I think I'm nine and three right now. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm like in second place in my league right now, but I'm gonna probably take an L this week. Cause I got, I got Allen, I got like Buffalo, a couple guys from Buffalo and they're all on, they're all on bye this week. So it's probably gonna be a bad week for me, but we'll see. We shall see. Next up is short grass living. He says, thank you, Ron. I ordered uh, spectacle flow from the golf course lawn store this morning and received the notice of shipment shortly thereafter. Appreciate it. And we'll get it down as soon as it gets here. Nice. Yeah. So if you ordered it, I forget where in the country you, I have to look at, like look at the orders and see when the warehouse, um, where you are. But if you're in the Southeast, it's, I mean, you maybe Monday, more than likely, maybe, it, I'd say Tuesday at the latest, but more than likely Monday, depending on where you are in the, um, in the Southeast. 
in the Southeast United States of America. I'll pass it on to them. I'm glad to hear that they are doing a good job shipping stuff out timely. Because I always tell them, I say, listen, order comes in. If the carriers haven't come yet to go pick it up, get it out. Get it out. People like their stuff. I like my stuff when I order it. People are the same way. So ship their stuff faster. Don't don't uh, don't be messing around with it. So I'm glad to hear that, that it's happening that way. Steven Thompson is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I plan on throwing down some sod next May slash June. I plan on applying prodiamine February, March, depending on the temps. Think that's okay? Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah, that, that'd be fine, Steven. You're going to be doing, yeah, you're going to be doing your pre-emergent in the, um, you know, February, March timeframe. You're going to be doing sod May, June. No problem at all with that. The only thing I would say as far as your preparation for sod, apply some kind of a, of a biostimulant, some kind of a granular biostimulant. Um, I'm a fan of Essential G. Essential G, Carbonized PN, both excellent choices. It's going to help that sod root in that much faster. But yes, you can still use your pre-emergent in February timeframe if you're planning to install sod in May, June timeframe. No issue with that uh, at all. And as far as what I'm telling you about, as far as what I would add before um, you put the sod in, if you go to shop and then go to Miramichi Green Biosimilants, either Essential G or Carbonized PN. This will be applied with a broadcast spreader. This you'll need a rake, like a like a um, uh, lawn leveling rake to, to, to move it around. But either one of these two are what I would use in preparation of you installing your new sod. Great stuff, sir. What kind of sod are you putting in? You didn't say. You just said you're putting in sod. You didn't tell us. You doing zoysia? You doing you doing Tahoma? You jumping in that Tahoma 31 bandwagon? What are you what are you putting in? You didn't even tell us, man. You're kind of holding out. You're like, I'm not, I'm just gonna ask the question, but I'm not gonna share all the I'm not gonna share all the juicy details. I'm just gonna tell you just enough just to get my question answered. But I don't want you, I don't give you any any ideas. Is that what's going on? Tom Sun. Okay, Jason Harrison is up next. He says, if you don't make a Caddyshack-inspired short, we're going to be disappointed. I can't really get it in a short, man. I already have, like, the Caddyshack. You guys have seen that, right? You guys have seen my mole video. Man, I got so much hate. The amount of people that, that, that email me after I did this video about saying, oh, my God, I can't believe you killed the mole. And, da, 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 and, and you know, this, this is terrible. And the mole didn't do anything to you. I'm like, whatever. Say, play, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Whatever. I don't want to hear it. So this is the short of that, if you want to laugh, Jason. So at Jason Harrison, this is the mole short based on that video uh, here, starring Mr. Alex Lee. And this is the long version of it, which is really not that long. It's like under three minutes. So this is uh, the long version, uh, longer version or full length feature. Uh, uh, well, Video, yeah, and it is Caddyshack inspired. It was pretty good. I thought I thought it was good. We had fun with it. We we had fun with it. I mean, we you know there was some Caddyshack in there. Um, there was like a you know there was like a little a little gang scene, a little bit of it was it was good. I think overall it was like a it. I, I, we made fun of a situation that, but believe me, was not fun when it happened. It was not fun at all. I was not a happy camper. So uh, so yeah, take a look at it get a good laugh at my expense, and hopefully the little bit of water I put on the lawn, well, not the, the lot of water I put it in the tunnel today is enough to make it decide to go somewhere else. We shall see, though. We shall see. If he wants to smoke, you want to smoke, I got it for you. If you want to go, let's go. All right, Stephen Toast Thompson is up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron. I'll be catching the replay on YouTube during my drives to and from work. Haha, ha, I have a solid sloped lawn. After top dressing my front yard twice, one of my sprinklers seems to be low, but is all the way extended, almost like it is it is washed around the sprinkler head. Should I just add extension pipe to it? Yeah, you could do that, um, Stephen. What what I found is I, I've had a, a similar issue, right? So whenever I my top my front lawn has been top dressed, the entire lawn has been top dressed so many times that the sprinklers all sit a little bit lower. When I replace them, like the ones, all the ones in the back lawn were replaced last, not last year, two years ago. Um, and whenever they, they, we replaced them, um, the, um, when w you could take that time just to, just to stuff a little bit of dirt, a little bit of, a little bit of, I would not use a rock. I wouldn't use a rock or anything hard because you could cause, you could crack the pipe doing that, but you can take like some soil, some dirt and pack it under the, under like the sprinkler, under like the, the, where the flexi, the flexi pipe, like it connects to the, to the head. Um, that can, that's good for raising it like an inch and a half, maybe as much as two inches if you need to, right? Just depends on, on how much you're trying to raise it up. And the front lawn, when I replaced all those earlier this year, I did the same thing. So whenever you're digging it out, 
just you know take when you're rinsing the new one just pack some dirt underneath like the little elbow that goes up to feed the uh the sprinkler and that will help that will help raise it up something to keep in mind is that whenever you do top rinsing going forward make sure that you cover the sprinkler heads get like some of those silicon frisbees that they use with like for dogs it's, if you look them on look them up on amazon it's like a like silicon dog frisbees is what you're looking for like cover the sprinkler heads with that when you're doing top dressing and that will prevent the sand from getting in the sprinkler heads and ruining them, you know, eventually. So that's the tip I tell you to help extend the longevity of them. But, you know, if you've had irrigation heads in there, sprinkler heads in there for, you know, four or five years, I mean, they are a wear item. They don't last forever. So you, it's not uncommon that you have to replace them. And I'm trying to think, like all of mine have been replaced at this point and have been in this house coming up on nine coming up on nine years so that's not that's not bad especially given the abuse they've seen with you know sand and all this other stuff getting washed down into them so there's there is that so hope that helps sir Oliver Rittum is up next he says Ron a few weeks or maybe a month ago you mentioned about some new things you've been experimenting with any plans to reveal it prior to 2024 no not until I have them because if I, not till I have it available for you guys to be able to, to get your hands on because otherwise you're going to be like, oh man, no, it's really cool that you got this stuff and it's not, you know, you didn't, you, you didn't tell us or I want to be able to get it and you're not gonna be able to get it yet. And plus the bottles, it's the stuff, the stuff that I have, there's not any, um, like this doesn't have a proper label on it as yet or anything like that. It's cause it was like for, it's like for, for testing, like a testing batch that was made for me to, to, to use and play with and give some feedback on and, um, you know, get, get some, some adjustments made to the formulation and, and whatnot. So I, you know, when it becomes available, I think you guys are going to really like it. Uh, it's like, it's like a, I think a better version of some products that we currently carry in the store. So we shall see, but I don't want to talk about it yet or give any details on it because you can't get it yet. So I want to make sure that all that is figured out first. And then I'll be like, Hey, this is something I was testing last year. You guys like how the lawn looked? Guess what? I was trusting this along with the, the the current stack that I run on the lawn, and I really like the results. And if you want to try it on your lawn this year, here's how you can get it. So, in time, in time, Oliver. I promise I will I will not hold it hold the information hostage forever. Eventually, it, I will let you guys uh, know about it. And then next up is Jason Harrison. He says, that video was hilarious. I'm just greedy and want another. I mean, that video was, it's a lot of work to create that. You don't, you don't realize, like, if you look at, I mean, that that video is only three minutes, not even three minutes, like two minutes and four to three seconds. And it's, there's probably, if I had to think about it, I mean, there's conservatively, there's probably 10, 12 hours of work in that video between like setting up each one of the shots and like doing them over and over and over again until I got on the way I want, like, and also the sound part of it, like, like getting, like setting up the, the microphones to be able to capture the sound the way I wanted it to be, to what way I want it to be. Um, like if you, if you watch it again, like whenever I'm sitting there pouring the coffee or you, like you notice that all that sounds really good. That doesn't just happen by accident. So, uh, so yeah. And then Alex was, was like part of my, my cameraman. He's like saying, yeah, that wasn't a good one. Do it again. And you know, he's pretty, pretty exacting standards. So, um, it's, it's a lot of work to do that. So don't just to do another one of the same thing. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I would do that would be better than that one. Plus, I don't need like a bunch of hate mail again from like, you know, the PETA people coming after me. Like, why didn't you just catch him and relocate him? I'm like, do you see what it did to my lawn in broad daylight? That was because there's like an act of disgrace, act of, act of, you know, act of, act of war. So you wanted it, you got it. So there you go. Well, we'll see, Jason. We'll see if it comes back and I will, I'll do some shorts, but it won't be to the extent or the production quality of what you saw in that video. Cause that's actually quite a bit of work to do. And I've, um, I've already done one. So, uh, so there you go. Well, guys, gals, I don't see any other questions or comments. What else can I tell you guys? Um, again, Spectacle Flow, I did, I did my last pre-emergent app of, uh, of the season. So if you guys are looking for something to, uh, to do, if you've not, if you didn't go out, if you have not applied pre-emergent yet, or you, or you didn't um, apply it at a, at a rate that will carry you all the way through until springtime, consider doing that. Again, I'm a big fan of Spectacle, Spectacle Flow. Especially, this is only for warm season grass. It's really tough to beat it. And uh, and yeah, to keep you guys posted as far as how uh, how the mole situation develops. And on that bombshell, I guess we will cue the outro music. Thanks again, guys, for coming to hang out with me. I appreciate you as always. If you have any questions, 
at all, feel free to drop them to me in email. We'll be back next week to do it all over again to talk about lawn care, life, football, you know, whatever, else, whatever you guys want to chat about. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have an amazing weekend. Get out and do something fun in the lawn if you can. You got cool and grass. Definitely get out there and mow it and allow us to live vicariously through you guys. And send me pictures. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. If you got some cool pictures of your lawn, you're proud of it, send me pictures of it. I'll, I'll show them on the live stream. You can show the entire world, you know, the fruits of your labor. Until next time, guys, have an amazing weekend. Take care.